the strip, all is quiet. At the Rio, not so much. Day seven of the main event was so much at stake. Day seven, dreams alive. Representing America today. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Love you guys. Lon McCarran, Norman Chad, Kara Scott, Joe Stapleton, and Francis Valentin Messina in second place. Vietnamese-born Christian Pham, the chip leader. I don't know what they're cooking in Vietnam, but I want some for my next home game stat. Ben Lamb is in fourth place and is as dangerous as they come. But Ben is getting married. He's not nearly as dangerous as he used to be. Marcel Luce has flown under the radar this year, Norman, which is hard to do if you're Marcel Luce. A legend in his own right, Marcel is a knight in shining armor. Someone get him some chips. And 2016 final tableist Michael Ruan still in the game, running late on day seven. Maybe today was laundry day and he just lost track of time. Well, we have 27 players remaining to begin day seven, and it is Christian Pham in the driver's seat. And who can forget about John Hesp in great position in sixth place right now. Antoine Saoud and Michael Roran in the middle of the pack, but if anyone knows what to do now, it is those two. Rounding out the 27, first-timer Dan Ott sits in 20th place. You see Luce second to last with just under three million. Michael Ruan has found his seat at our feature table trying to pull a Mark Newhouse with back-to-back -back main event final tables. The Cinderella story so far has been John Hesp. It continues here on day seven. He has been the life of the main event party for several days. When I got back to the hotel last night, I couldn't believe how many friends requests I was getting from Facebook. There were, my phone was ping, ping, ping all night through. All of, from all, all over the world, from Russia, China, Europe. I can't believe what's going on. And very nice is the money, but the opportunity to be playing against so many different characters, different personalities, that's what I've enjoyed the most. I won when I got into the top thousand. That was it, that brilliant. Every day I get a stage further, it's just a dream that's prolonged. John and the other 26 survivors guaranteed at least 263,000 and cab fare to the airport. One player guaranteed over $8.1 million. Blinds at 120, 240,000 with a 40K ante. Ruan opened with King 10, a raise to 600,000. You know, John Hess could be everyone's dad at this table, which would be awkward, of course. <laughs> I call. And John is going to call with ace nine offsuit in the small blind. And the big blind is Robin Hegela, German born pro living in Vienna. Hegela studied psychology at Innsbruck University, studied economics at Munich University, but did not graduate from either. That is very American. 27 year old made day five of the main event last year in his first attempt. And for 360 more, he'll come along. Three will see this flop. This is the first hand of day seven, Lon, so this will be the first flop of day seven. Thank you for that. Four, Jack Ace, top pair for Hesp. And he's going to check it. Higala checks big blind bust. And now Ruan with a Broadway draw. Continuation bet here is mandatory. The analytics demand it. What do you know from analytics? I know how to spell it. Doubtful. All right, 825,000 from Ruan. There is the C bet. John Hesp at 64 would be the second oldest to ever win the main event. Raise it. Oh, raise. check raise. Whenever you expect Hesp to do something, he does something else. He's got the oversized red chips. Two million. Those are worth a half million. a million each, so four of them is the check raise to two milli. Higala folds. See, if Ruan had not rushed into the room, he wouldn't be here for this hand. That's why I'm a walk, don't run type of guy. <laughs> Ruan can ill afford to be casually putting chips in the pot. First hand. Amazing. This is the first hand as well. <laughs> well, John seems very comfortable. Ruan trying to figure out the puzzle of John Hesp. Guess it must be a tough call for you, is this, Michael? You know me now, you know the way I play. I could be bluffing, I may not be. Either way, it's your call. Maybe he's Will Kasuth's long lost uncle. <laughs> Would you like to see? Michael elects to fold his cards. What do you think? What do you think this? Thank you. Have you got better than this? Obviously not. No. Okay. Roran feels exasperated. 
You help yourself to those. At this point of the main event, people have to be wondering when the shoe is going to drop on John Hesp. Can someone with as little experience as this 64-year-old continue to play this well and run this well? And it doesn't seem so crazy to speculate that his success will encourage other newbies to come out next year. Ain't no shoe dropping on John Hesp. First of all, it's a stupid expression. Shoes don't drop out of the sky. And second of all, let me tell you something. If by some miracle some shoe does descend from the heavens, it will be John Hesp's exact foot size and it will match his outfit. It's just destined. And so where will John Hesp finish this year? First, write it down. Though sadly my predictions are also destined for something. Failure usually. Well, John looks sharp, alert, ready to play his game. What a free roll he's on right now. John's fellow Brit and fellow first-timer Jack Sinclair shares the feature table with John Hess. Wonder if John shares Jack's love of music. Uh, so I got into music uh, through my father. Uh, he was a music critic and uh, used to play in a lot of bands. When I was 12, he got me to start playing drums. When I first started playing and I like formed my own band, uh, we used to play a lot of metal, which, uh, which used to be my, uh, my true love. Uh, so the name of my band uh, back in the day was Ophelia, which was the name of uh, a Shakespearean character. She was the one that killed herself and like floated down the river surrounded by flowers, which we thought was pretty metal. I used to listen to a lot of Metallica. I've actually seen Metallica seven times live, which uh, I guess is, is either cool or really lame, but... <laughs> If you see me at the table with my earphones in, I'm probably listening to either uh, gangster rap or really heavy metal. The gangster rap or heavy metal, I believe, is a mistake at the table. I'm not an Osmonds fan, but I think they put you in the right poker zone. <laughs> Three full tables of nine in action. Sinclair, the chip leader at this feature table with nearly 30 million. Under the gun plus two, a raise to 575 with ace 10. FYI, I once dated Ophelia. <laughs> the chip average at the final table will be just north of 40 million. Kui Wen was in 25th place last year to start day seven and won it all. Never count yourself out. John Hess folds his button to the small blind with Queens Robin Higala. He was a day six chip leader. His father is a film producer, so he got Robin a couple of jobs in the film industry. My father worked for the IRS. I didn't want him to get me a job. <laughs> Eagle afar from the chip lead now, but a hand that could get him healthy here. That's three bet chips he's got in his hand. Yep, he makes it a million eight. Scott Stewart folds his big blind. Back to Sinclair now. My guy Jack Sinclair is behind here, so he is in his comfort zone. <laughs> Indeed he is. All in. And he puts Eagle all in. And a call. And so Higla at risk, Sinclair with just one over card. Yeah, the big stack at this table picked the wrong time to bully a short stack. Higla will be north of 60 big blinds if he can double up here. And Jack would still have a strong stack if he doubles up Robin. So he could afford to do what he just did. Here's the flop. And pocket queens for Higla. Stand up through the flop. Higla thinking, clean board, clean board. Sinclair thinking, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm still not sure about that scarf and t-shirt. Don't know. Turn card now. Is an A. Sinclair putting Higla on the edge. Jack Sinclair in control with one card to come. The river card, another Jack, and that closes the book on Robin Higla for this main event. I'm sorry, man. Don't be sorry. It was such a good size, man. I was like, you didn't think you had anything. Jack, let him be. You just bad beat him out of the main event on day seven. Eagle is second main event played, second main event cash. Sinclair's ace comes through for the knockout, and Eagle is chips. Jack, an even stronger force in this main event now. My man. Oh, oh. On day six, a rivered straight flush put Christian Pham in the chip lead and sent Superman home. 
ฟไฟไดมอนด์ไฟไดมอนด์ไฟไดมอนด์ครับโอ้ my god that that you know unbelievable A uh, tournament changing card for Pham on day six. Now a big stack here on day seven. He's got pocket sevens after Karin Sarkeesian opened under the gun for 580 with tens. A very rich man over there. If I were a rich man. I would pay to hear Marcel Luce sing his selections from Fiddler on the Roof. It beats Jeff Madsen rapping. <laughs> Action is on Dan Ott in the small blind. Ace, Queen of Hearts, Pennsylvania first timer, is going to re-raise it to two million. I would just call with Ace, Queen suited from the small blind to see what develops, but I'm not Dan Ott. I'm Norman Chad. And Dan Ott is so thankful he is not Norman Chad. Lusk folds his small pocket pair in the big blind. So back to Sarkeesian, the original Razor. Armenian-born businessman with 20 World Series caches. Fam looks like he just swipes something from the school cafeteria. <laughs> he does indeed. Sarkeesian folds the tens. Oh, the three bet sheds the best hand. Will it get Fam to give it up too? Oh, Fam not going anywhere with that big stack. So he'll call with his small pocket pair against the ace-queen suited of Dan Ott. Ott puts his game face on somewhere under there. Another pair hits the board. Pham's pocket pair is a three-to-one favorite now. A continuation bet makes sense, analytically speaking. Why don't you speak of something you know of? That would pretty much limit my speech. <laughs> Ott missed that flop, but he will continue. A million six. Fam studied graphic design at St. Paul Technical College in Minnesota. I believe they are the banana slugs. And he calls for a million six more with the best hand. And he's got Dan Ott in his sights. Turn card. Jack of diamonds. Fam still best with that pocket pair, but Ott once again reaching. Yeah, Ott wading into the deep, deep end of the pool now. I hope they taught him how to swim in Altoona, PA. All right. Almost 8.4 million in the middle. Those lavenders are worth 100,000 each. And that is a total of 2.4 million now. I told us all of his bluffs have been getting through. Fam, his bluffometer seems to be registering something. Fam, a four to one favorite now with the pocket pair. It looks like he wants to hang in there with the sevens. Yeah, he's weathering the pressure from Ott. Usually, when you cover your face up, it likely means you're bluffing, but Ott always covers his face up. Oh, my. A queen for Ott. He hits his card to put the brakes on Fam's charge to taking this pot. And now Ott checks. They both check, and Ott will take the pot. Fam cannot believe it. Better to be lucky than good to more areas in which you have limited knowledge. Good for you. The day seven chip leader is heading south. Well, for those of you who have not checked it out just yet, Poker Go is the only place you'll get more than 100 days of live poker a year and the best and original poker programming. Subscribe to Poker Go today at PokerGo.com. Back to our center ring. John Hess with a big stack open raised from the button with 7-4 off. Go, John. But in the big blind, Damian Salas has kings. Salas, the short stack at the table. And just a call. Nice call. Damien calls. Two players to the flop. All right, here's the flop. Well, Hesp with middle pair, but it's far from the pocket kings that Damien holds, and he checks. One million. Salas, 42-year-old former lawyer. This is his third main event cash in five years. A prolific online player in Argentina. Remember Paul Masson would sell no wine before it's time? Damien Siles believes there will be no action at the poker table before he acts. Just a call. He's a bit too deliberate for my tastes. Turn card now. Jack of spades. Salas still good. And he checks again. Hess might be wondering if he can get his jacket laundered before this hand is over. <laughs> 350,000. 
Downsizing now, just 10% of the pot. Is that as bad or is that just a deposit on a bet? I, I am bet sized beflummoxed. <laughs> now, the Argentinian part time lawyer, poker pro with the Kings. You can actually see his beard growing as he waits to act. <laughs> I think anything he puts in would be a check raise here, and that is a check raise to a million, too. Well, thankfully, he acted before the clock struck midnight. Now, John Hesp, who has a piece of the board with the sevens. I call. Hesp making a habit of calling with third pair. All right, well, over six million in the middle. The river card is the five of hearts. Salas remains the one to beat with pocket kings, and... I think this would be an uphill battle for John Hesp at this point. I'm all in. All in. Both have played this hand very weird. Since it's weird, I should understand it. <laughs> it's really not an awful board for the pair of sevens of John Hesp. But with the short stack bluff all in against the big stack. Can I make this call? Hesp playing a bit loose with his big stack. You got some of that. <laughs> or anything before that. I've got some of it. Would you like a call? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I eight. don't know that. I fold. I'll give you the chance. That's one. Sorry? That's one. You oh, well, then you yeah, turned it over. Yeah. This. Mm -hmm. You had to turn it well, eh? Yeah. Okay. This. Whatever. King. Nice one. King, King Jack. King Jack. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we see on TV later. I couldn't beat I, the Jack. I told you. You I, have to choose when. I couldn't beat, beat the Jack. King Jack, King King. It didn't matter. John was beat. And he finally figured it out. Back at the Rio, day seven underway as we move closer to the final table. 8.15 million bucks up for first, and the November Niners of past are still impressing. I've yet to receive an invitation to Ben Lamb's wedding. Maybe he Instagrammed it. I don't have Instagram. Antoine Sawut, just one ear, bud. He's assured me he will place the second one in if he makes the final table. And Michael Ruan's here, New Jersey's finest, sitting as a short stack in 23rd. Michael competes in poker like he did in high school hoops. Intense, intense, intense. Ruan has been quiet since his fourth place finish last year, at least when it comes to tournaments, but that's not unusual for Michael. Well, just like last year, he came out here about a week before the main event, played in just three World Series tournaments, including the online event. Ruan in the big blind with jack six of spades. Randy Pisani open for 525 with nine seven suited. Two Hoboken boys. Ruan with both earbuds in. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Ruan makes the call for 285 more. Heads up now. Flop is five, tray nine, two spades. Ruan with a flush draw. Pisani with top pair. Ruan has the action. He checks. Pisani says Doug Polk is one of his inspirations. Wow. That's a tough stumbling block to overcome. <laughs> Pisani continues with the best hand. Had to be talked into playing the main by his girlfriend and friends, and they won't let him forget it, I'm sure. Ruan is so intense, he listens to all news radio on those earbuds. <laughs> On. Michael with a flush draw shove. A shack of spades. Ruan puts it all on the line on a draw with 26 bigs. A ten of spades. He's not Danny Negrano, but those are pretty good guesses. This would be for about a third of Pisani's stack. The all Hoboken clash gets pretty serious. And he shows top pair and folds. Well, great all in from Michael Ruan. Right stack, right moxie. Never underestimate moxie. Well, Randy remains on our virtual final table in eighth as Ruan picks up some much needed chips, but much more work to be done, though. At the secondary table, Marcel Lusk is all in with ace eight off. He'll try to double through Benjamin Polak holding jacks. The music stops when Marcel Lusk is down to his last chips. If you knock out Marcel, you meet me outside at the next break. What happens then? Well, I usually don't even make it outside, so I can't tell you. <laughs> All right, Lusk at risk against the Jacks. Deuce King five, a bleak sight for Marcel. Boy, this does not look good for Marcel Lusk. 
Nine of diamonds, no help. It's now hit the river or hit the road. There's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> Well, Marcel, not in a singing mood right here. Only in a saves him. The king of hearts on the river. Polak wins with kings up, and the main event has lost Marcel loose. Sad. 14th in 03, 10th in 04, 23rd this year, plus two other main event caches to his credit. The man can play. This World Series cash bested only by his 10th place finish in 04. And what a comeback for Polak. He was 291st of 297 on day five, now in fifth place. He's good looking, but he's on my list now. I do say goodbye. <laughs> what a delight. <laughs> Great to have Marcel in the field, as always. Overhead view of our three remaining tables at the featured table. Three players paid to see an eight-high flop. Jonas Makoff checked his gut shot. Now Randy Pisani with pocket fours, best hand right now. John Hess involved also with a queen-high flush draw. Pisani bets a million three. And Hess does raise right away with his flush draw. Million. Now he's got the flush draw and he's got two overcards to Pisani's pocket four, so he's actually a favorite. 2.6 million is the raise. Makoff folds. Now back to Pisani with his fours. I believe that's Pisani, yeah. but it could be Dan Ott. <laughs> Good point. A million three more, and somebody makes that call. Turn card. Oh, a tray of hearts. Welcome to the world of Mr. John Hesp, Randy Pisani. 2.6 million. When John Hesp finds a bet size he likes, he sticks with it. Hesp with the flush, 2.6 million. Pisani out of position here and probably facing the prospect of a, a larger bet on the river. Does he believe John Hesp? People rarely do, and there is the call. Pisani drawing dead, watches the 10 of diamonds fall. Check. He checks. Four million. That is an authoritative four million. It's almost as if he said, four million with a queen high flush. <laughs> this guy's my hero. <laughs> no matter what happens. Espa's made a lot of fans at this World Series. It's tough to hang on here with pocket fours. Hess raised the flop, then he bet out on the turn in the river. Could he really have air? Bassani was so sure of his hand the whole way. Well, he started this hand with a pretty healthy stack. It would be about half as healthy if he calls here. John comfortable. He has it. They keep oh. giving him chips. Randy makes the call of four million. Queen flush. Queen high flush. Queen high flush for John. Yes! Yeah. 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 It's a bad call by me. Pisani takes the hit. Hesp up to almost 42 million. Oh. It was a very bad call by me. Lon, who is the chip oh, leader gosh. at the main event now? John Hesp! Thank you. Unbelievable. If the John Hess storybook needed a boost, achievement unlocked. A massive pot puts the 64-year-old Brit ahead of everyone. Catching up on some earlier knockouts, Michael Sklenichka went out in 26th. Ah, he was a kid with a dream. Poker pro Jake Baisley hit the rail in 25th. Ah, he was a kid with a dream. And German pro Florian Lunert busted in 24th. Ah, he was a kid with a dream and a beard. Each of them earns almost 264 grand for their efforts. Yep, you heard Norman Chad. I'm Lon McCarran. Kara Scott and Joe Stapleton here also. At the end of day seven, we'll have our 2017 final table lineup. John and the big blind with tens. Is that you, Jack? Yes. Jack Sinclair opened with aces. You must have a big hand. No, I don't need it. Call. I assume our card reader is malfunctioning. Jack Sinclair would never have a big hand. Pocket aces? <laughs> That's the way he answered John. He was like, huh, I don't have a big hand. Of course not. <laughs> six, six, eight. The paired board might put a governor on the action. John checks. Well, these are the two biggest stacks in the room. John Hess stack might be considerably lightened here. Yeah, they got about 20% of the chips in play between them. 700 grand from Sinclair. I raise. Woo! John says raise. 1.5 million. Jack Sinclair, say hello to John Hesp. Sinclair will call using the two mini Frisbees, the yellow one worth a million. 
Turn card, another eight, a double paired board, and both players with over pairs to the board. I check. Both slow down. River card, third diamond out there now. 1.5 million. Hesp is a tough riddle to solve. And a call. Oh, huh? Two pairs. Uh, three pairs. <laughs> yeah, well, three pairs then. Well, the fireworks that could have happened were dampened a bit. <laughs> yeah, friendly duel. Peaceful finish, a little bloodshed. I guess that could have cost me a lot more. Yeah, it could have cost you a lot more. Yeah, what, a, what a turn for you. Yeah, I got away with that lightly. Thank you. Thank, thank you for not pushing. <laughs> Appreciate that. As a reminder, for unlimited access to more of the best in live poker all year long, get in the game with Poker Go. We're going to keep it here at this featured table. Scott Stewart, fourth main event, first cash for the Long Beach Pro. I wonder if he has to remove that bandana when the national anthem is played. <laughs> Next in line with pocket nines is Damien Salas. When Salas was a lawyer, I'm sure he made a lot of money when he billed by the hour. 18 million is the chip average. He sits here with just under 6 million. A raise there to 650,000. He even pushes chips into the pot slowly. Brian Pacioli, one of four bracelet winners remaining. Lamb, Fam, and Grico, the others. Now folded around to John Hesp in the big blind. Queen, 10 of hearts. Call. Call. For a moment there, it looked like Hesp was daydreaming about better days in Bridlington. But these are the even better days, John. Day seven of the main event. Always a thrill ride when John gets involved. Quad nines for Salas. The tens now for Hesp. Wow. Check. Salas considering whether he's going to check back slowly or quickly. Salas went through Hesp for his last infusion of chips, which he's since given back to the table. Six of spades now makes it official. John Hesp million. drawing dead, but bets a million, too. I love him. Okay, if you're going to re-peak new rule, you have to look at both cards at the same time. Well, a good attorney never does anything without knowing the answer. That is for show. Well, Osalis is so deliberate, he has enough time to ask Hess to sign a contract agreeing that his bets are binding. <laughs> I think he is putting together calling chips, Lon. Pinch me when he's done. Ouch! <laughs> that is a call. Salas looks as thrilled with quads now as when he first saw them an hour ago. River card, deuce of diamonds. Deuce of diamonds on the river. Same bets, 1.2 million. John Hess with another small bet. But on this river, it's coming around the bend and the waters are going to get very, very rough and rapid very, very soon or sooner or later. <laughs> Whenever Damien decides to act. I'm all in. Ah, uh, yes. I call. Double up for Damien Salas. John walked right into that one. Right. That's a, how much? John showed two pairs. How much, man? You got the algo, no? <laughs> they don't get much better hands than that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was going to go all in anyway with that board. It was going all in. Yeah. <coughs> nice hand. Thank you, sir. Just picked the wrong time. Yes! The wide range of emotions remain on day seven. Wins feel great. Having an opponent flop quads, not so great. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. 
The impressive Vegas skyline just down the road, the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino as we play down to a final table here on day seven. I've been having the trouble with these chips all week. <laughs> Too many, yeah? I've been having trouble with these chips all week. <laughs> what a line. Brian Petroli <laughs> enjoying the John Hesp show. From an early age, Brian seemed destined to enter this line of work. My childhood was pretty normal. I grew up in a small town. Um, farms everywhere, uh, everyone hunts. Once I started to get like, you know, 12 or 13, all I wanted to do was just go hang out with my dad and his buddies while they played poker, you know, smoked cigars and told dirty jokes and whatnot. I remember specifically on Sundays, you know, they'd watch all the football games. I was like, oh, this is the cool place to be, you know what I mean? What a disparity here in chip stacks. Sinclair and Hess with 38 million each. Next in line, Pacholi with almost 10 million. Pocket trays from Brian. He raises to 750. Pacholi grew up in oh. Allegheny, sort of the Bridlington of upstate New York. Hess calls. Wait, wait. Are you saying Allegheny's like Bridlington? Bridlington's a coastal town on the North Sea. Allegheny is on the Allegheny River. Same thing. <laughs> okay. Michael Ruan in the big blind. 7 6 off. His friend Pacholi, the original Razor, so Michael will come along. You know, the poker buddies are going to sandwich John Hesp here. Three to the flop. John Hesp with the best of it here. All spades. Rowan favored with the best flush draw now. Pacholi with the best hand with the trays. Allegheny has trees. Bridlington has trees. 700,000. <laughs> Check to Hesp. He bets 700,000. Hesp getting feisty with squad douche. Ruan folds his baby draw, and now Pacholi with the trays and tiny flush draw. Yeah, Pacholi can't like it, but the small bet might bring him along, and that spade in his hand might bring him along. John brings a lot of people along with his bet sizing. <laughs> <laughs> and there is the call. Called by Brian. All right, so heads up to the turn. Turn card. That pairs John and gives Pacholi a flush, but he's just got the tray. Allegheny has cable TV. Bridlington has cable TV. <laughs> Pacholi checks. Moment. And John checks his hand. Spade check, probably. 700,000. Same bet. Well, he either thinks he saw a spade, or he's pretending he saw a spade, or maybe John's just thrilled he paired his 10. Pacholi, just with a call. Do you have a spade? Uh, John. One more card to go. John exposes his hand. What do you want me to do? It's a live hand. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Okay. All right, so they'll see a river card, the Jack of Spades. Jack of Spades on the river. So it's on me? Yeah. Yes, it's on you. It's a live hand. And Pacholi knows what John has. Lost it altogether. Lost the flood. Yeah, Hesp with an honest mistake. Pacholi now can try to exploit it. He knows he has the best hand. The three of spades will play. Two red chips, that's a million. I call. Maybe thinking he's chopping, but he's not. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with a spade. I, I missed that one good and proper. Sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry, guys. Unfortunately, you're going to get a two-hand penalty. Right. For your cards yes. with action penny. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. So you're going to come over here with me, John? Worst case scenario for Hess, he pays off the river and he gets a penalty. You might have DDD'd you and you're going to fold it to the river. I, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. That's, that's I'm pretty, speechless. That's pretty thin value. That's dangerous. I mean, what do you I do if he raises that? <laughs> you only, you only got the three. What if he puts me all in? Should I call? John Hess sitting out for two hands as day seven continues without him. That is the piece of jewelry that brings everyone to the main event, the third largest starting field in history. 8.15 million go to the champ. Mr. Hesp has served his penalty. Action is on Randy Pisani with Queens. He's the short stack now. He's begun every day of the main event with an above average stack. He's going to raise it to 700,000. Cole. Cole. John calls. Cole. The offsuit Ace 9 has a very mediocre historical EV. <laughs> You've kept track. I'm impressed. Sinclair 
in the big blind with a tray of diamonds, and he wants to get involved. My man Jack Sinclair is floptimistic. Yeah, he's hoping to find a scary board so he can bluff if his history is any indication of current intentions. No diamonds out there. Pisani's best with the Queens. It's checked to him. Pisani worked in institutional fixed income sales for 26 years. I could say that five times and have absolutely no idea what that is. <laughs> I'm right with you, buddy. He's now a self-employed money manager. This is his first World Series of Poker Cash. And with the over pair to the board, he bets a million seven. John with the middle pair. Is there any bets? 1.7. He loves to hit the board. I thought John was going to turn over his hand and say, pair of nines, do you have a 10? <laughs> Hess, middle pair, top kicker, and a well-worn jacket. Raise. And he says raise. 3.5. I don't know about that raise. 3.5 million. Sinclair gone quickly. Five, yeah, 3.5. Yeah. Bassani all in. Wow. How much did he get there, man? Hess getting a little reckless with his big stack, but he's priced in now eight to one on a call. He's a four to one dog here. Well, John has nearly 30 million chips behind. I thought another 1.3 million was an automatic call. Call. Amateur on amateur. He makes the call and Pisani in line for the double up, but also on the chopping block. Well, Pisani can't believe it and doesn't like it. Don't do it to me. Come on, don't do it to me. A blackjack dealer once told me, if you think the dealer's going to do it bad to you, it increases the chances of bad. Got to think positive. A nine or a dice will do. Turned card now. Pisani at risk, and boom, yes. there is the ace. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. Well, Pisani got a flush draw. His face says it all, though. You got to feel for him. Put a heart up there one time for me, Jill. Believe that? No queen. No queen. That's unbelievable. No queen. No queen. Or a heart. No queen, no house. Queen or a heart. Let's go. One card from being knocked out. If I had a heart one time, dealer. Please don't. If I had a heart one time. The river card. A blank, yes. and Pisani pays the ultimate price on day seven. Shades of my second honeymoon. John Hess will absorb Pisani's chips. Randy cannot believe what just happened to him. Night of the Walking Dead, starring Randy Pisani. Pisani wins almost 264 grand, but feeling quite vexed while he takes the walk. John Hasp, he's destined, Lon. It's called destiny. That was some hand. Did you see it? I did. Oh, those poker gods must be there. For me, anyway. Don't do it to me. Come on, don't do it to me. Yes, yes, whoa, whoa! So while John Hess breathes even easier at the feature table, let's go to the outer table, all in on a call. Valentin Messina in the red with pocket tens. Called the shove of former November Niner Antoine Saoud, penning his main event life on ace-queen suited. Saoud, 33-year-old French pro. Messina, 37-year-old French pro. And what a remarkable main event for the French. Four still in the field. All black flop gives Saoud a Broadway draw. Messina's tens are still best. Saoud's bid for another main event final table rests on this. He still needs help. Over 22 million chips up for grabs. Turn card is a queen. Saud takes the lead. Pairing his queen with a Broadway draw. Messina is open-ended. 
And now Messina needs help if he wants to steal the hand back. Ace or a nine, bust Antoine Saout. The river card, a 10, and so the set, no good for Messina. Saout, Rivers, Broadway, and that's a nice double up for Antoine Saout. Boy, Antoine survives and now has over 70 big blinds. Yeah, he's on the virtual final table in seventh place. So 19 players still remain. With a knockout comes a redraw and a pay bump worth over 76 grand. It's exciting. What do you think? Uh, six, 16 numbers. Six. Oh, yeah, yeah. 80K, I mean, that's race that's to 900. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah then it gets starts getting nice. It's like it's not already nice. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, it starts getting nice. But I'm saying these other now. tournaments, it's like yeah, yeah. You, can, you can play three days, finish like 16th, and yeah, yeah, you will make, you know what I mean? It's like, it's crazy. And the blue Mike Krishenko discussing the pay jump, which is almost twice the value of his best ever live cash. Well, Benjamin Pollock sitting with pocket aces, sitting between Michael Krishenko and Dan Ott's first date. <laughs> Christian Pham, former chip leader, chip leader at the beginning of the day, open with ace tray of hearts. Yeah, he said, he texted me yesterday. Uh, excuse me, uh, Benjamin's got a little work to do here, boys. Uh, it's turning into a great first date, Lon. <laughs> Benjamin with the aces, with the re-raise, with the big stack. Rayard, another Frenchman, folds back to Fam, the original razor. And uh, Fam now faced with the three bet out of position. He's been leaking chips since he was top dog. He's below average now. 2015 bracelet winner and friendly with last year's champ, fellow Las Vegas resident, Quee Win. He's funny kid, man. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen him in forever, but... And so Pham with a couple of the yellow so mini frisbees makes the call with a suited ace. This Pollock just seems too well-rounded and too mannered for my tastes. But if I were that good looking, I guess I'd be a good guy too. <laughs> His ninth main event. And he flops top set. Pham with top pair and only one hard out there for him. And Pham checks. Well, that's the kind of board a set of aces might get some action. I would not slow play it. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the board draw heavy out there, so a free card might bring trouble. Pollock, 34-year-old, would-be engineer turned poker pro. And he is reaching. The big stack at this table to start the hand. That's almost half the pot, 2.6 million. Fam, former graphic designer turned poker pro. In fact, he got into poker after he was laid off from a graphic designing job. The weak ace would send me back to graphic design. It has sent many a poker player back to graphic design. There's the call with top pair. Turn card now, seven of hearts. Fam picks up a flush draw. And he checks again. Yeah, Benjamin sees the draws out there. Really, a re-peak at this point? And he wants to put Fam all in. Yeah, Fam wanted to see a river, no doubt. But does he want to see a river for the rest of his chips? If he folds here, he still would have 25 bigs. But he's drawn to the nuts. That's hard to lay down. The straight flush gave him the chip lead. Going into day seven, there is the call, but he does need help, as you mentioned, Norman. Yeah, as you mentioned, Christian Pham was chip leader when day seven began. He's in danger of a swift fall here. Polak has the lead, but he has a sweat with one card to fall. Pham is the one looking calm for all his chips. River card is the four of spades, and Christian Pham is out. He was chip leader with 27 left, out in 19th place. Ouch. My goodness. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Las Vegas for continuing coverage of the 2017 World Series of Poker main event. Lon McCarron with Norman Chad, Kara Scott, and Joe Stapleton bringing you the final day before the final table. British amateur John Hess continues to be the talk of the town. And he's still got talking chips. Um, 1.2 million. With bottom pair in a straight draw and overall chip leader Jack Sinclair checking. Hess bets the flop. I'm just checking you've got Queen 9, yeah? Just double. Just tell you what, whatever you do, call, raise, or fold, I'll show you. 
So if I call, you'll turn your hand over? No, <laughs> not until the hand's over. No, not until he's dead. No. He's always, I show, I show. <laughs> okay. you, you, talk, you talk me down. What do, you, what do you think? I think you had Queen Nine of Clubs. There you go. Eight oh. nine. That would have been a bit of a good message. Mm -hmm. And I'm down straight, draw a pair of eights. It's hard to know if there is a method to John's madness. Heck, I've yet to meet anyone who told me they have a method for madness. By definition, it would seem madness shouldn't have a method. Just saying. Wow, I think you're right. Sinclair's laydown keeps the leaderboard unchanged. Jack is on top, followed closely by two other first-timers, New Jersey's Scott Blumstein and the man everyone's loving, John Hess. And everyone keeping their eyes on one of the short stacks, Michael Ruan, continuing his improbable quest for main event back-to-back -back final tables. The payout for the next three bust-outs is 340000 with the jumps getting very serious from here to the this end. This going to be happening a lot. At this feature table, Scott Blumstein, the first-timer from Jersey, sitting there with Ben Lamb, a long timer from Las Vegas sitting next to each other at this featured table back on day five they played what might be the hand of the tournament so far yet another six lamb improves to sixes full of jacks the board is sixes full of threes I don't like this idea but I love the fact that Blumstein is trying it 840,000 with a little flourish this is not going to work Ben gives it up! I do not understand that fold, but on the other hand, Lon, since Blumstein made Lamb fold, that might be the most impressive play I've seen to date at this main event. And they are at it again. Blumstein limped with pocket tens in the small blind, inducing a raise from Lamb in the big blind to 1.2 million. And Blumstein calls. First timer against an all-timer. Yes, I said all-timer. That's how good Ben Lamb is. A 3x raise from Ben, I think, was designed to end the hand right there. But Blumstein is not going anywhere with the 10s. Blumstein is interested in poker broadcasting. Take a number, pal. <laughs> the two big stacks at this table. Blumstein checks with the ace high board. Lamb is interested in poker profit. He dropped out of college to get a degree in poker profit. Former dealer down in Oklahoma with middle pair. Bets 850000 Scott thinks and calls. If Blumstein wants to be a poker broadcaster, he's going to have to start to talk more. Turn card now. Another ace, perhaps both breathing a little easier now. Actually, Blumstein looks too nice to be a poker broadcaster. Joe Stapleton would eat him up. <laughs> he checks again. Blumstein giving Lamb a little rope. And Ben saying, sure, why not? I love rope. Putting chips together again. First bet was about 30% of the pot. This just over a quarter. Well, this is a situation where Blumstein is using Lamb's aggression against him. It requires a good read, but Scott has shown us he knows his way around the table. And Scott is not one who likes to fold when he gets involved in a hand. And here's another call. I wonder if Ben looked at his fiancée, Rachel, this intently before or after he proposed to her. <laughs> River card, nine of spades. Another check from Blumstein. Ben with a little showdown value, but not enough. Blumstein gets the best of Ben Lamb again. It's hard to make a habit of that. Yeah, Lamp kept pressuring Scott, but as we've seen, he's a sticky player. Lamp down to 10th place now. And how about Scott Blumstein, this first timer with over 46 million. He's got the chip lead on day seven. Next door, John Hesp has run into trouble with pocket jacks. Go figure. Mike Krushenko, the Pittsburgh pro on the run of a lifetime, open with pocket kings. Hesp just three bet to two million. Krushenko, 33-year-old, Ohio-born Pittsburgh pro. Krushenko with raising chips. Yeah, that's a four bet to four and a half million. Cool. Oh. Krushenko roots for the Penguins because there is no NHL team in Cleveland, so it stands to reason he'd also root for the Steelers because there is no NFL team in Cleveland. <laughs> Boom. 8-8 eight, eight, ace. So the Kings are best, and a check here now from Hesp. John Hesp's dream ride could hit a big bump in this hand. They both check. Turn. Queen of diamonds. Krushenko still good with Kings up. But it's Hesp who is reaching. Three million. You heard him. 
Hess bets when he should check, checks when he should bet, raises when he should call, and it's been mostly working. A call from Krushenko. Oh, third diamond now comes out on the river. Four million. That's four million. Tiny river wager, a John Hesp signature move. From another player, it's a blocker bet from Hesp. It's just Hespian. Krishenko. Calling chips. I guess you got Call. me. Kings up will take it for Mike. Yeah. Good hand, nice hand. Hess falls to fifth, but still with a hefty stack. Good call. Krishenko was a first-timer last year and cashed. He's a second-timer this year, and he's cashed again. Before today's play got underway, Norman and I were discussing who to cover during our on-camera time. I threw out a bunch of names. Michael Ruan, Ben Lamb, Antoine Sawood, and you gave me that look. Yeah, that look. So I guess that means we're talking about John Hesp again. Who isn't talking about John Hesp? The Kardashians are doing a special on Hesp. Starbucks is naming a latte after him. The British royal family just ordered 12 John Hesp jackets for Prince Charles next high tea. Ruan, Lamb, Saud, all good players, all nice stories, all warm-up acts for the headliner that is John Hesp. Would you talk about Eminem when you've got Elvis in the room? So you like this guy. What's not to like? Mixing it up with the pros, talking and laughing, showing his cards, spreading good cheer. He's having a great time. What a novel concept at a poker table. Imagine if he were a monk. Everyone would want to move into a monastery. Hesp in a monastery just might cramp his style a bit. Meanwhile, Jack Sinclair flopped a queen-high flush draw against Brian Pacioli at this table. Brian with kings up, almost a two-to-one favorite here. But Sinclair is putting chips to work 800,000. I don't know where they make Pacioli's hat. Frankly, I don't want to know. That should be between him and the hat maker. Oh. Pacioli makes the call. Jack Sinclair back on a trapeze. I love him on a trapeze. Ten of diamonds improves both Sinclair with a gut shot, Pacioli with a flush draw. Yeah, that card might allow Jack to jump off the trapeze and onto a high wire and posture a little bit more. Sinclair has the action. He loves to bet on the late streets. 2.2 million. Pacioli not going anywhere with kings up and a king high flush draw. If the river card is red, on, someone makes a hand. And you continue to educate the American poker public. If not me, then who? Uh, how about an actual analyst? A call from Pacioli. And it is red. It is a diamond. Pacioli with the flush. Pacioli with the flush. Sinclair with queen high. He's still on a high wire. And the footing up there is pretty shaky. All in. Yeah, nowhere to go but stay on the high wire. Oops. He puts Pacioli all in. Pacioli quickly calls. Easy call for Brian. You know, that shove had a little Anton Morgenstern behind it. Good point, one of Sinclair's coaches. Jack's like, what the heck? I probably can buy more chips at the gift shop. Pacioli now joins Jack on the virtual final table in sixth place. Flop top pair, get a nice run out, and get paid. It's working for Brian. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Day 7 action continues here at the Rio. At our featured table, it's the Scott Blumstein Show. More than double the chips of the next closest competitor. The 25-year-old from New Jersey online grinder turned main event monster. He has sailed smoothly thus far, enjoying a main event debut that dreams are made of. It's all happening so fast. I. I, I can't even really take it in. This is my first time actually in seven days playing on one of these special tables. Just trying to get used to the new table and just the atmosphere of, of the cameras and being in the spotlight. It's been a long journey here, I'm not gonna lie. It hasn't been easy, but somehow I persevered. I just don't wanna wake up. I just wanna keep living on this dream, if, if it is a dream, and just uh, keep playing poker. Scott said he was happy to avoid the feature table until day seven, just easier to play away from the bright lights. Under the gun, Scott raised to 850 with ace-queen off. Valentin Messina has paid the big blind, so with ace-five, he calls for 450 more, hoping to flop a little lightning. And here is the flop. 
And top pair for both, but Blumstein dominates. Messina checks his weak ace. And now Scott, the big stack here, starting the hand with almost 46 million, bets a quarter of the pot. Messina went to the same engineering school as Benjamin Polak, who is still alive here. L'Ecole Centrale d'Electronique in Paris. I, I believe they are the banana slugs. Messina now with top pair. Bad kicker makes the call. Blumstein went to Morristown High. Turn card, tray of diamonds. Blumstein still with a strong advantage as Messina collects a wheel draw and checks again. And Blumstein almost certainly knows he is best here. But he'll check back. River card. Nine of clubs, a clean run out for Blumstein's ace queen. Messina's been in a check calling mode lately. He does check again. Blumstein will fire here. And in spots like this on the river, it's important that your opponent think you're capable of bluffing. Otherwise, you will never get paid off. A million six from Scott. Messina worked six years as an engineer before turning to poker. The weak ace might send him back to engineering. And there's a call. Scott will take another pot. Messina's free fall continues. He was second in chips to start day seven. Now last among the 18 remaining. And they say a Morristown high education ain't what it used to be. So Valentin Messina looking for a way out of the desperate times that he now finds himself in here. FYI, I know Scott also graduated from Temple University. So while Blumstein dominates his table, quite a different story at the other table with four players tightly bunched up top. Benjamin Polak with the lead presently. Polak was 291st out of 297 players entering day five, now on the cusp of the final table. Yeah, he could have called it in at the end of that day five, but here he is. Mike Krishenko with ace nine raises to one million from his chip stack of 31 million over to Antoine Saout, former November Niner. I have not played Ace-9 off suit since the Riverfest Poker Classic in Cincinnati in 1983. <laughs> what a performance you put on there. All right, over to Jack Sinclair in the small blind with a real hand, Ace King of Hearts. Yeah, Jack Sinclair hates playing real hands. Just no fun. Yeah, that's why he just called, I guess. So heads up, Kershenko and Sinclair both with an ace. And an ace in the flop, a king in the flop. Top two for Sinclair. He checks it to Kershenko with just an ace. And this is why I haven't played ace nine off since the Riverfront Classic in 83. <laughs> a million two from Kershenko with top pair. And now a check raise from Sinclair with top two to three and a half million. Kershenko quickly reaching. He's got top pair and the ace of spades for backdoor possibilities, and he makes the call. But ace nine is still just a trumped up weak ace. Well, Kershenko knows Jack can do this without having ace-king. Do some clubs on the turn. When Jack plays ace-king, he always holds the left side of his neck. When he plays seven-deuce, he holds the right side of his neck. Interesting. Kershenko now drawing dead here after the turn. And Jack wants to come out firing. Each of those yellows worth one million. That is five million total. Now the price is getting stiff. But as you mentioned, Kershenko knows Sinclair could just have air here. It's over half the pot. Ace nine not looking so good, and it's in the muck. A good fold from Krishenko. Would have expected him to call another bet. Jack Sinclair moves up a notch now. Now into second place overall. Some players move up and down like a Ferris wheel at the main event, but Jack Sinclair is much more like a thrill ride. Coming back to Vegas right after the break. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high Roller Bowl 7 champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. 
Emotions definitely running high as we move closer to our final table. Life-changing money at stake. One day you're a pro or amateur trying to make it. The next, you might have $8 million in that bracelet. A look now at the main event tournament summary. Day one saw 7,221 players enter for 10 k apiece, the third largest in history. And Antoine Saoud, one of four Frenchmen alive with 18 players left. What a showing for France. The secondary table, Richard Grieco of Great Britain, just three bet all in for $7.8 with King Queen off. Antoine Saoud can't let this go with pocket tens. He does make the call. Grieco at risk with two overs. The bracelet winner pushed with 19 bigs left. No, first time I've been over in Salah. Saoud risking 40% of his stack trying to bust Grieco. Antoine Saoud looking for another trip back to the main event final table. He was there in 09, finished third. The flop, Trey Ace 8. So far, so good for Saoud. The Greco was 50th at the 06 main event. Turn card seven of spades. Greco would love to see paint now. He's got one last chance. So also was 25th in 2016. Greco is going to need a non-spade king or queen, or he is jilly wonkered. The river card. A 10 and the set for Saoud eliminates Greco in 18th place. Jilly Walkered? Yeah, well, I was doing a live stream earlier this year at your home casino, Stone's Gambling Hall near Sacramento. And we asked viewers for another word for Ramboozled. Joe Bestor of El Segundo, California, came up with Jilly Walkered. I like it. Any chance Joe can fill in for you next week? Good for you. Greco makes his exit. Saoud gets healthier. Yeah, and this is the third time this man has made the final three tables of the main event in the last nine years. Antoine Saoud into sixth place right now. For those of you who have not checked it out yet, Poker Go is the only place you'll get more than 100 days of live poker a year and the best in original poker programming. Subscribe to Poker Go today at PokerGo.com. We're going to keep it here at this eight-handed secondary table. Chip leader Jack Sinclair is first to act, and he peeks down at pocket kings. One yellow chip makes it one million. My guy's picking up some hands. By the way, Hesp's also my guy. Blumstein's my guy. And Mike Rowan, too. Do you have any guys who busted on day one? No, I only back winners. <laughs> Krishenko with queens. Uh-oh. Oh, once again, Michael Krishenko in a bad spot against Jack Sinclair. A re-raise to 3.1 million. Krishenko started the hand with almost 30 million. Sinclair with almost 38 million. Nobody else wants to step in between these two, so back to Sinclair. When Sinclair plays pocket kings, he always holds the left side of his neck. When he plays pocket threes, he holds the right side of his neck. Mm -hmm. You are one observant analyst. Mm -hmm. Another thing I love about Jack, he plays in the buff, so to speak. No hoodie, no shades, no headphones. Ooh, he's got a lot of those yellow one million chips. That's a four bet to seven million. Uh, these are two sizable stacks with big hands clashing. Krishenko with the stare down. He said he felt uneasy early in the main event. He didn't wear the sunglasses. He put the glasses on and it seemed to calm him down quite a bit. But here with the call, and now we've got a huge pot with two big hands, and Krishenko, the shorter stack, could be in big trouble. Well, I like his call there because if he raises, he's only getting called by better. All right, here we go. All undercards to both. Stand back, everyone. I am reminded of my friend, comedian Don McHenry's old adage, a 10 on the flop always helps somebody. It didn't help anybody there. But when he says always, he means most of the time. Jeez, nitpick me to death, why don't you? Sinclair with the best hand. There's five million. The last time against Sinclair, Krishenko hit his ace on the flop and was in bad shape. This time, he gets a great flop of undercards to his pocket queens, and again, he is in bad shape. You always must be suspicious of Sinclair. No. All in. Now, this pot is swelling, and Krishenko now all in and all but out of here. Oh, well. <laughs> you look really happy now. I think he was going to call, then saw that Krishenko was just busting the table his hand. Sinclair might believe Krishenko is even stronger than he is. <laughs> How much is it? How many times do we see someone lose most of their chips with an overpair to the board, and they run into a set? Jack thinking 
Krishenko might have a set or pocket aces. Now this hand extended is asking for a count. It's about 22 and a half million total. Well, if, if Sinclair calls here and it turns out he is crushed, he would be down to 20 big blinds. Jack calls, and just like that, Krashenko's at risk. Man, <laughs> I believed you so hard. Krashenko now needs a queen or running straight cards, or he'll be gone. Mike is 9-1 to one against. He had one of the stronger stacks in the game, and now they're all up for grabs, and boom, just like that, Sinclair closes the deal with a king. And Jack Sinclair now with a monster stack. And the end of a dream run for Krashenko. Mike Krashenko out in 17th, wins 340,000. That'll feel good in a few days, but right now he's stinging. You were so close to folding that. Oh, yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe it. You were so close, I thought you were going to fold us. Well, there's only one hand I beat. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. yeah. Did you, you, must have, you must have been thinking aces. Well, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't see you getting away from that. That was almost... I mean... Right before the break. It took Sinclair a few moments, but eventually he made the call heard round the Rio. A 60 million chip pot puts the first timer in the chip lead by a British mile. Welcome back inside the Rio. Jack Sinclair sits as the main event chip leader by a lot. 20% of the chips in play with 16 remaining. May I recommend taking it easy now, sir? Oh, no. Damn the torpedoes. Full speed ahead, Jack. All in a call at the main table. Ben Lamb with his ace king is poised for the knockout of short stacked Alexander Rayard with just ace queen. Rayard down to 12 bigs like countryman Benjamin Polak and Valentin Messina. He also has an engineering background. This Frenchman began day seven in 18th place in line to go out in 16th. Rayard awaits his fate. Ben says, what the heck? Been there, done that. All right, here's the flop. Rayard at risk. And it's bleakness for Rayard. I guess he can root for a straight on the board to chop it. Turn card now a jack. It's paint, but Rayard gets no help there. Not looking good for the all-in. Rayard will need a queen on the river, or he is wamboozled and jilly wonkered. And Lamb can pick up his 5.1 million chips. The four of spades on the river. Ben Lamb's ace king holds up. Rayard's main event ends in 16th. When you get short, you move all in. When you move all in, you can lose. When you lose, you're out of the tournament. Moral of the story, don't be all in. Rayard with a $340,000 payday. Well played, Alexander. Ben Lamb getting it done into seventh place thanks to Rayard's chips that are now in his stack. It just feels like Ben Lamb went from pre-K to a poker table. All right, let's get over to the secondary table. Jack Sinclair, Scott Blumstein with huge stacks. Together, they have more than a third of all the chips in play. The blinds are up 250,000, 500,000 with a 75K ante. Jack Sinclair shouldn't have a care in the world right now. Massive chip leader here on day seven. Great image, great name, nice beard. His first time in Las Vegas, he was going to play on day 1A, but partied instead and switched to day 1B. A fortuitous decision for him, he tripled his starting stack. John Hesp open raised with pocket Jack Sinclair in the small blind with ace Jack. Sinclair has the game of a 26-year-old and the beard of a 56-year-old. Hard to do. Sinclair calls for 950 more from the small blind. Portuguese pro Pedro Oliveira, king four, in the big blind calls as well. John Hesp favored, but plenty of danger in those opposing hands. And there is a Jack Hesp does it again. Top set for the Brit. Sinclair with top pair, top kicker checks. Oliveira with bottom pair checks. They all check. That is one sly senior citizen. Eight of hearts. Hesp has the other two now drawing dead. Sinclair almost did not come to the main event, says he was so happy he was able to buy in. Sinclair reaching for chips with top pair, top kicker, a million eight. Oliveira, 32-year-old poker pro slash entrepreneur. 
This would be an optimistic call with fourth pair and a player behind him. Maybe he's raising. Boy, Hesp is loving this. And there's a call from Oliveira. I raise. And yep, a raise. He wished he could check raise, but he was in position. <laughs> Four million now from John. John Hess continues to baffle and perplex his opponents. It's like he says, sometimes he's got it and sometimes he doesn't. Top pair, top kicker. It looks awfully good on this board and hard to tell a cheetah to stroll and it's hard to tell Jack Sinclair to slow down. Yeah, he is not one easily scared off. He calls for 2.2 million more. Now, Oliveira folds his pair of fours, heads up to the river. My favorite two Brits heads up. One of them is drawing dead. Deuce of clubs changes nothing. Sinclair checks. I'm going to treat you here. And John checks back. Three checks. Oh, ho. Happy to win the pot three, there. Three can checks. Wow. I like it. Look at that. Unreal. Yeah. I said I was at the tree, I've been honest. I'm going to well, take, I'm not going to be greedy. At the poker table, nobody likes to see the poor being kind to the rich, or in this case, the middle class being kind to the upper class. Hesp's table mate's probably not pleased that more of Sinclair's stack was not taxed on the river. I hope you remember the, the same. He was calling wow. seven million. <laughs> seven million. <laughs> Help us John Hesp is one of a kind. Well, Normandy appeared to be on the verge of a massive pot, but a very generous check on the river limits Jack Sinclair's damage there. John Hesp's success at the main event has been due in large part to his unpredictability and running good. In the pot just before the break, an unorthodox check on the river allowed Jack Sinclair to keep a few more chips than we expected. Hesp is loving every minute of this main event. It's my time. The poker gods are with me. The vibes I'm getting, the calls I'm making, the raises I'm making, most of them have been right. But don't forget, I've also had the cards sometimes, and sometimes I haven't. And of course, uh, as the song goes, it's you know knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. That is also a big thing. He had never played a tournament with a buy-in larger than 10 pounds before this main event. 15 remain. Day seven will end when only nine are left to the seven-handed featured table. And we get a look at Richard Dubini, one of two players left from Argentina, Damien Salas, the other. He's got pocket fives here. 32-year-old pro. He also cashed in the 2014 main event. He raises to just over a million from his stack, which is about half the average. He came in with about 12 million to this hand. Valentin Messina on the button, suited 10-9. I'd love to play that, but he's under 10 big blinds. Blumstein now in the small blind. Big stack, ace jack. He has an accounting degree, but Scott says he might want to pursue something in sports one day. You know, maybe like George Costanza. I think he got a job uh, in the Yankees front office. Blumstein's stack is second only to the ridiculous stack of Jack Sinclair at the other table. Blumstein has some of those yellows worth a million. Well, maybe he can pursue a position as a, a chip assembler. He's assembling million. chips here. Thank you for the lead in. A three bet to 3.4 million. Ben Lamb now in the big blind, ace eight. What are you thinking about, Ben? You've got half a dead man's hand and it's been three bet. You should be checking wedding registries anyway. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. And Lamb finally gets rid of it. So now the re-raise back to Dubini. Dubini has made three final tables at the World Series. Against all odds, they are still pocket fives. He's got a shovelable stack in the 20 big blind range. I wonder if Dubini carpools with Damian Salas into this main <laughs> event. <laughs> they do take their time, don't they? It's two Argentinian players. I'm only. There is the shove for 12 million. Against all odds, it's still ace jack offsuit, Scott. How much is it? Well, it's another 8.6 million to Blumstein. That would be not quite 20% of his large stack. If he knew this was a race, I think he'd gamble. Few people have gotten Scott to fold. But Dubini shove giving Scott a lot of things to think about. Wish I knew if there was a jump. Uh, probably gonna be good, bad play. 
And he does fold. I spoke to Dubini on the last break. He didn't speak back because he had his earbuds in. Save me, thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Dubini used to play chess, I assume, with earbuds. Yeah, I reckon. That was dumb. Scott still questioning his fold with Ace Jack, despite that setback. Blumstein still in great position at this main event, along with Jack Sinclair, John Hesp, and Dan Ott. First-timers are really making their mark here. Blumstein and Ott, both moneymaker effect poker babies, both 25, both watched the 03 main event and were mesmerized by Chris Moneymaker's title run. To the other table, John has aces and says Rays. Hesp did not watch the 03 main event. He was running his company, renting caravan vacation homes. He raises to a million two. Sinclair with King Jack of Spades calls for a million two. Sinclair is going to test John Hesp again. Good luck, buddy. If Damian Salas ever takes that jacket off, it's mine. On the other hand, I have no interest in anything Pacholi or Saut is wearing. <laughs> well, nobody wants to play with the two big stacks. So it'll be John Hess and Jack Sinclair, a couple of Brits with a combined total of over 100 million chips. And ace in the window, Hesp with a set. Sinclair sees two more spades there for a flush draw. Action flop like in the movies. Have you spoken? That's on you first. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. Forgive me, I'm getting tired. <laughs> Jack, I want Goldfinger and I'm getting Shakespeare in love. Flush draw now for Jack Sinclair. Yellow equals a million. Not sure if this is good acting or bad acting. Raise. Raise. John's go-to move. He's been wearing that check raise out to four million now. Sinclair again trying to unlock the puzzle. That is John Hesp. Plenty of reason to call. Turn card now. King of Diamonds, Paris Sinclair, but he's still behind. Check to Jack again. I hope Jack doesn't channel his inner Anton Morgenstern here. Now he'll take a free river card. Eight of hearts, no help to Sinclair. Four million. Four million? <laughs> what do you want to look at me? Have an interesting decision. Yeah, the Kings could be good here. That doesn't look like a calling face. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Fall. That was tough. Wow. Really tough call. And he's not showing it. That's brutal. Come. That's so brutal. Oh, not sure the ball. Oh, no. Not sure the ball. Nice hand. Wow, if I didn't fire there, I was finished. I know I was. Sir, do you love? Do you love? Well, you have to wait and see. Watch the TV. I'm, I'm, I'm really not saying this, Sam. Very interesting. First timer on first timer action. Hess gets the best of Sinclair there, while Ott and Blumstein continue their final table quest at the feature table. Our focus now is on the players still in the main event, but some early chip leaders and big names have fallen here on day seven. No doubt everyone walked into the Rio today thinking that today was their day, but that can only be true for nine of the original 27. Jack Sinclair coming back to earth somewhat. He's down to only 60 million with 24 milli being the average stack. Brian Pacioli, one of the 15 still left with the final table in his sights, a poker pro from New York. He was a chip leader late at the 2016 main event, but this, his first time playing on day seven. His only real job was working as a busboy at Beef and Barrel in Olean, New York for three months. I was at that Beef and Barrel when he worked there. The tables were never bust. Brian has the action in the big blind. Jack Sinclair raised it to a million two with a suited queen. Pacioli with a suited ace. Brian makes the call, 700,000 more. By the way, one of our staff members is pointing out to me that Jack Sinclair holds the left side of his neck on every hand. I guess that's why we have staff members. Oh, man. 
Middle pair for Pacioli is best. One diamond in the flop for Jack Sinclair. Pacioli won a bracelet in 2013. This is his third straight main event cash. Bracelet was down under the first bracelet awarded at World Series APAC. A bet of 1.4 million from Sinclair. Sinclair's general MO is you don't bet, I do. Brian with a check call. Well, Jack says no problem, like I haven't been in worse spots than this. Turn card, five of spades. Sinclair adds some equity with an open ender, but Petroli has the best hand. He checks again. You don't bet. I do. No, he checks back. Oh, what a nit. <laughs> River card, jack of spades. Petroli is best with third pair, but four spades on the board make it interesting. And he checks again. I don't think Jack wants to go to showdown with queen high, but maybe he'll surrender here. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Wow, we got a lot of those mini Frisbees, yellow and reds, and he puts together four and a half million of them. I love this guy. And this is familiar, Sinclair bluffing, Pacioli bluff catching. Yeah, you see him squirm. It's a big percentage of his remaining stack. He started the hand with just 14 million. A yeah, tough spot for Brian. Yeah, he gives it up, and he's not happy about it. No show, sure, Jeff. Oh, one day I will have the courage to bet rivers like that. Until then, I'll, I'll be happy making the final two tables of 18-person sit and goes. I don't play. I play super boring, so it's like. So Sinclair now with almost 64 million. Pacioli could not pull the lever on the call. He now into 11th place. As a reminder, for unlimited access to more of the best in live poker all year long, get in the game with Poker Go. Keep it at that same table. Brian Pacioli on the button. He's got pocket fours. He's back down to 11 million since doubling to 22 million versus Sinclair. Brian with a raise to a million two. Call. John Hess will call with Queen 10. Historical note, this is the first time two people with these exact two hats have ever faced off on day seven of a main event. Hess been the big blind. And the flop is King Four Trey. It's Pacioli's turn to flop a set against John Hesp. Hesp checks. I'd love to see a stat on number of sets each player flops in an event. Flopping sets equals winning pots. They both check. Queen of Spades, that pairs Hesp and gives him the better flush draw of the two. Of course, Hesp has usually been the one flopping sets. He's in bad shape here. He bets a million five now. Can't blame him for betting. That's just an awful turn card for him, picking up queens and a flush draw. Pacioli's only got 20 big blinds behind, so he might be thinking shove here. Well, he's not putting all of his troops together, just 4.2 million of them. Uh, I've got a queen, and I've got a spade, and I've got an enlarged prostate. I think I carry on. Hello, that with a small chip stack like that. I figure you're not going anywhere if I thought, so I either put it all in or throw it, it's one or the other. Scary board. I've got some of that. I just figure you might have something a bit better. And Hess perhaps wondering if his spade would be good if he calls. You, gonna keep? you don't have to answer him, he's from out of town. Just say no. No, I won't push. I don't think I'm allowed to talk about my hand. Alright. Well, no, just heads up. I mean, it's alright. Um, I've got a tough call here, Dennis. I really have to make a decision. Oh, I like how Brian pulls his stack closer to himself. You're not getting any of these chips. John's been paying attention. And he gives it up. Pacioli yeah. rebuilding his stack now. And to 10th place now is Brian Pacioli. 
Well, if the poker gods are with John Hesp, he calls there and makes his flush. Hess gives up a few, but it was a well thought out lay down. A nice pot for Brian Petroli at a nice time. A turn raise that gave Hess something to think about. Inside the Rio, first timer Jack Sinclair still enjoying a massive chip lead. Hard to complain about that spot, but it can put some added pressure on anyone as the final table nears. Pressure? He's got no pulse and ice water in his veins. To the featured table where Scott Blumstein rules the roost with almost 44 million, 19 million more than Dan Ott, the next best stack here. WSOP.com New Jersey Player of the Year. What the heck is that? That's like being Switzerland.com Naval Officer of the Year. <laughs> Blumstein folds. Ben Lamb we haven't seen much of. Ace Jack of Spades here, early position. Ben Lamb is Norman Chad School of Poker Player of the Year any year. No dot com involved. From his stack of almost 24 million, a raise to 1.1 million from Ben Lamb. I wonder if anyone at this table is a VanityFair.com Poker Fashionista of the Year. <laughs> Micah Ruan. Didn't I once see Ruan on the cover of Teen Vogue? Possible. He folds. Valentin Messina in the big blind. Queen Jack offsuit. He's down to six bigs. You can't even get a leisure suit for six big blinds. Two face cards. It's a green light. Well, he's in the big blind, and he's doing some calculations that are over my head on whether he's supposed to go with this. Plus, he's doing them in French. Yeah, they're all in. And a quick call from Lamb. He'll have Messina at risk and dominated. Messina exasperated and knows the end might be at hand. It's been a disastrous day for Messina. Lamb looking to move everyone else a step closer to the final table. Has anyone ever looked more at ease at a poker table than Ben Lamb? Valentin's girlfriend, Johanna, hoping to extend their Vegas experience. Messina just saw his countryman, Alexander Rayard, go out in 16th. Of course, what a year for France. Benjamin Polak and Antoine Saoud also still in the running. The flop, 8-5-10. Messina flops a gut shot to pick up four more outs. So the 10 helps somebody on the flop. Apologize to Don McHenry, Lon, right now. I will not. I think you made him up. <laughs> <laughs> Johanna still... Hoping for some hope for her bow. Turn card. Four of clubs. Lamb's ace high. Still in line for the knockout. Messina has been solid throughout the main event. Ben Lamb looks rather disinterested. He's a pro. One card to come. Messina has to have a nine or a queen or his main event is over. It's another 10 and that brings the 2017 main event to an end for Valentin Messina. Pleasure playing, brother. He makes his first main event cash a good one. Yeah, 15th place for Messina earns the pay jump to 450,000. Ben Lamb adds a few new chips to his arsenal. He's in fifth place with 14 players left. Messina will make his exit after a fine showing here. It's good to be Ben Lamb. And another main event final table in the offing for the veteran. Time to rebalance the tables and get a look at the leaderboard. John Hesp is in third place. Messina nowhere to be found. Jack Sinclair with nearly 62 million. And Michael Ruan, my goodness, still with a shot at back-to-back -back main event final tables can't happen. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Hello everyone and welcome back to Las Vegas for day seven coverage of the World Series of Poker main event. $8.15 million on everyone's mind as the final table nears. Lon McCarran with Norman Chad, Kara Scott and Joe Stapleton. Two tables in play only. New Jersey first timer Scott Blumstein leads the featured table. British pro Jack Sinclair leads the secondary table. He's also a first timer. And only two bracelet winners remain. The much decorated Ben Lamb at the feature table and Brian Pacioli at the secondary table. Table. Let's jump into the continuing day seven action where headband clad short stack Scott Stewart shoved with jacks and big stack Scott Blumstein with pocket nines calls. Stewart in for 17 bigs, Blumstein in for 20% of his chips. 
Stewart began day seven and 23rd of 27. A double up here puts him much closer to the average stack. Blumstein would remain table leader should he double up Stewart. Queen eight deuce, Stewart and his jacks are good for now. Stewart has four World Series circuit rings in great shape to double up against Blumstein. Bust out prize right now, 450 grand. Six of clubs, Scott Stewart's double up, only a clean river card away. Only the nine of hearts would send Scott Stewart home. The river card, the five of spades, and that will work for Scott Stewart. Well, a big hand for Stewart. He gets new life here on day seven. The USA beats USA. Stewart plays the game with great verve. Gotta love it. $8.15 million for first place. A lot of storylines, including Micah Ruan's bid for back-to-back -back final tables. Mark Newhouse probably did it in 2013 and 14. Can Ruan duplicate it? 26-year-old Jack Sinclair leads the way at our secondary table. Jack is coached by Anton Morgenstern, which is kind of like being coached by John Daly. It's an all-or-nothing proposition. John Hesp is the likable grandfather of seven on a wild main event ride. He's been in a state of disbelief this entire time. Phil Hellmuth is coming over to my table and so we need people like you in the poker world. Please make it to the final table. Thanks, Phil. All my family, friends, and acquaintances are so proud of what I've achieved here. I just find that incredible. I'm not going to turn around and say I'm going to be upset or angry or disappointed if I don't make the final table. The most amount of money I've ever won was less than a thousand pounds. I have not thought about the money. I've got people like Dave said, you realize the next place is worth this, that, and the other. I said, well, no, I haven't really looked. His goal was to simply make the top 1,000 in cash. Thankfully for us, he has far exceeded his goal. You saw the graphic about main event first-timers, but we still have three players who have made the main event final table before, including this man right here, Antoine Saoud with pocket nines on the button. He was a first-timer in 09 when he finished third, won his seat to the main event in a crisp moneymaker-like $50 online satellite. Saoud with uh, just below chip average right now, raises to 1.2 million, and Hesp with Queens. Welcome to John Hesp's main event. He either wakes up with a better hand than his opponent, or he makes a better hand. Hesp in the small blind. Raise. Of course. Three million. You heard him. In the big blind, Karin Sarkeesian. He folds. 19 French players cashed in 2009, the best French showing ever at the main event until this year, 21 cashed, including Saoud and Benjamin Polak, friends who both live in London. So now Saoud trying to figure out the kaleidoscope mind and jacket of John Hesp. And he'll call for a million eight more with an inferior pair. That's a call. And now the flop. Seven deuce deuce. Both have to feel good about their hands. Four million. You heard him. Four million. Instead of four million. Saud and Polak both went to engineering school. Saud actually dropped out in 09. I don't know if engineers have better poker minds or if engineering school is so boring and difficult it pushes people into poker. <laughs> That was over half the pot in that bet from Hesp. And now Saoud with those yellow oversized chips worth a million each makes the call. And Antoine in for almost a third of his stack now. King of hearts, nobody likes to see that. Four million. Four million. What's that Kevin Clunder rule? Uh, when an amateur bets the same amount on the flop and the turn, they're usually weak. Well, here's my new rule. If Kevin Clunder tells you something, ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the radar is up. It would be nice if Antoine put his earbud in his other ear, at least feign interest in his opponent. Show the love. 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 Show the love.
take this round with As we've come to learn at this main event, there is never a dull moment with John Hesp, whether he's winning or losing pots. In that hand alone, we had pair over pair, Antoine's singular earbud, John's desire to show his cards, but Antoine's refusal to let him. Norman, so much to discuss. There's Newton's law of gravity and Einstein's theory of relativity and Pythagoras' Pythagorean theorem. And now there's Chad's wave particle duality of quantum poker, which of course leads us to discuss the one and only John Hesp. Ah, yes, John Hesp. How can I summarize John in two sentences or less? Here we go. We've all witnessed movie scenes where a Neanderthal gets dropped into modern times and is completely baffled by what he sees, yet he somehow makes it to the end of the film. That's John Hesp. Two sentences. John looking very much at ease, letting the game come to him. Antoine Saoud is John's latest foil. The table wanted to see a bluff in the previous hand, but Hess doesn't need to bluff. He's always got it. Oh, my goodness. There you see how the prize pool is being cut up in the immediate future. 8.15 million to the top dog. Back to our main feature table now. Michael Ruan. Fourth place finisher from last year is a very short stack. Queen, 10 of hearts. He ran out of clothes at last year's main event. I think the same thing has happened to him this year. Yeah, he's run out of his chips now. 6.8 million all in. Blumstein, the big stack at this table. Can't play nine, Trey. How about Ben Lamb, the 2011 World Series Player of the Year? Uh, three peaks and he folds an ace. And Stewart with Ace King. Call. Fresh double up. He'll make the call to try to knock out Ruan. Well, it could be worse for Michael right now. Last year's main event field, 6,700. This year, 7,200. The chance of making the main event final table last year, 1 in 750. The chance of making the main event final table this year, 1 in 800. So the chance of making the main event final table back to back in both these years, 1 in 600,000. Good luck. And that is what is on the line for Michael Ruan. Ruan trying to double through Stewart, who just doubled through Blumstein. Here's the flop, and there's a 10 top pair for Ruan. A strong line now to the double up. Ruan seems a bit dismayed that he hit his 10. I guess he would have preferred quads on the flop. <laughs> Turn card now. Michael with queens up, stealing outs from Stewart, who now needs Broadway to win. And of course, this is an important pot for Stewart, too. He'd be down to 13, 14 big blinds if he loses. Ruan trying to keep the dream alive. Stewart needs a jack. The river card, a five. Michael Ruan hangs on here in the 2017 main event. Shucky, 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 baby. Shucky, 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 baby. Is that some sort of secret menu jersey dinner order? A rare smile from that jersey boy. Hi, Sam. It's always a you get rewarded, I guess. Michael Ruan still alive. A view of Vegas you don't see often. There is life away from the strip, but right now the poker world entirely focused on the Rio and the 14 remaining players. Michael Ruan still among them. Jack Sinclair is a relative newbie to live poker, but he's got serious poker minds behind him. Poker royalty right here. Um, <laughs> Anton Morgenstern, two deep runs in the main event, and told me how to play the big stack. And uh, I he told me this uh, a few months ago, actually, when I was playing a different tournament. He said, make the same mistake I did. Don't, don't slow down. So uh, that's what I've been doing. Uh, to make the final table of the main event, I mean, that's like a poker player's dream. To do it, like, on my first attempt, coming here would, would just be insane. Um, nothing's really sunk in at this point. Um, I, I still feel relatively calm, so I guess we'll wait and see. Sinclair coached by Anton Morgenstern and Philip Grissom. Poker royalty indeed. Jack just opened raised with Queen Ten of Hearts and got a customer in big blind, Antoine Saoud, holding a couple of nines again. These two will see a flop, and oh my, Sinclair flops a king high straight, Saud bottom set. Wow, in the battle of beards and big hands, advantage Jack Sinclair. With his set, Saud checks to the pre-flop raiser. That is a dangerous board though. Jack, who loves to fire away whether he hits or not. 
A million five, about half the pot. Well, Sinclair must be in shock. He's usually bluffing here, <laughs> not betting the nuts. If you're a pro and you have to re-peak on the flop, I'm sorry, you should have to forfeit your hand. Sinclair with over three times the stack as Saud. Oh. Saud makes that call. Turn card now. That's <laughs> another jack, and that will submarine Sinclair straight. Saud catches nines full. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this is how British and French hostilities began in the late 18th century. Saud checks again. You know, it strikes me that Jack does better when he's bluffing than when he's betting a made hand. He flopped the nut straight, and he is now drawing dead. Sinclair reaching again. That is 3.3 million. So slow play the flop, then check the turn to set this trap. Will he spring the trap right now? With paired boards come dark clouds. Sinclair has that dark cloud over his head right now. And Norman, it looks like Saud is putting together check raising chips. And there it is, 7,875. A moment ago, Jack Sinclair is thinking awesome. Now he's thinking awful. Can Sinclair get away? Ah, Sinclair being very sticky. Yeah, 7.875. Eight, seven, five, now a lot more later. He pours chips into the middle that will soon go across the table to Saud. 22 million in the middle, tray of spades. And so Saud now wondering if he can get more out of Jack. A deuce or a tray on the river never changes anything, anytime, in any hand, anywhere. So with about 20 bigs left, a very shovelable stack. Yeah, half the pot. Yeah, there they go. Well, Jack was on the offensive on the flop, was forced to play defense on the turn, and now he's got to wonder if he needs a better health insurance plan. Yeah, nothing really changed on that board on the river. If he called the turn, why not call the river? But Saud looking very comfortable, showing confidence by shoving there. I paid you off the last time you had a boat. I remember it. But you didn't look like this. You looked really different. But you were further away, and it was day two. So day two lighting is way different, and Antoine didn't have any gray in his beard on day two. But you just, oh, you just look so uncomfortable. <laughs> you should just call King Jack on the floor. Seems a bit silly. Seems a bit, well, maybe not. Jack arguing with himself, and I think he's losing. Like, sort of clubs and couldn't just let it go until it Jack opting for the table level view to get a better tell on Antoine. Hello. Now Sarkeesian wants to put Sinclair on a clock. Wow! You know, if the flush had gotten there, that might give Jack another reason to fold. All right, you're going to have 10 seconds to actually hand while you have Zero, you have a dead hand. Ten. Ten second count. Seven, six, five, four, three. And Jack folds and his card's exposed. Jack somehow found a fold and saved himself 10 million chips. Hard to do. Well done. And, and seeing Jack straight, Antoine has to be demoralized to even get a call there. Absolutely, Saoud. Thinking he'd get the full double up. The guy was valuating worse than in that approach. 75 for the Annie's place. I mean, maybe same hands is possible, but I think he had HG. Yeah. Yeah. 75 Annie's place. I would say same hands or. Do you think he would have called? How blue would have not been on the floor? Probably. There have been a lot of hands of the tournament so far, and that one ranks right up there. Good fold, Jack. You're still the chip leader. 
Winning a pot on day one, sure, that feels nice, but winning a big pot on day seven, hard to contain your feelings when that happens. Every pot so critical as these players navigate their way to the final table. One player who does a good job of keeping his emotions in check is that man, first-timer Jack Sinclair. Poker is his current passion, but music isn't far behind. His father, longtime music critic at the Times of London. Jack started playing in bands as a teenager, mostly heavy metal, and he's worked in a recording studio as a sound engineer, but in the music world, you just don't get the bluff enough. Only 14 players remain. Exhaustion countered by adrenaline. Excitement balanced by patience, each with their own unique recipe for success pitted against the rest. Karin Sarkeesian has queen eight of diamonds. He's all in for about 6.3 million. 46-year-old Armenian. Started this day 19th of 27. He's in for 12 bigs. Sinclair can afford this if he feels like gambling. He's got 51 million. But you know, pairs don't become Jack Sinclair. There's the call with the deuces, a small percentage of his stack. And Jack will go for the knockout, try to get everyone a little closer to the final table, except Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian has 20 World Series caches. Michael Ruan would get a little closer to back-to-back -to -back final tables here if Sarkeesian is gone. Here's the flop. And a queen for Sarkeesian to take the lead. Sinclair usually bluffs when he's behind. He can't do that here. And another hard on the turn. So Sinclair with the flush draw, the only flush draw with the deuce. That's why it's always better to start with two suits in your hand line, two possible flushes. Top notch analysis there, partner. You should expect no less. <laughs> All right, the river. Cardo, the six of hearts. Sinclair with the babyest of flushes. Good enough to eliminate Karin Sarkeesian. Good friends, Pacholi and Ruan moving on. Karin Sarkeesian wins 450 grand. That's why I say suited hands are overrated. Unsuited hands give you twice as many flush draws. So with Karin Sarkeesian's elimination, we're down to 13. Sinclair and Hesp, the only two over 50 million. Most of the virtual final table hovers around chip average. What Antoine Saoud and Ben Lamb and Michael Ruan are doing is remarkable, all trying to make their second main event final table. And of course, Ruan hopes his buddy Brian Pacholi gets there with him. Well, the Deuce of Hearts made all the difference there for Sinclair. We move from one first-timer to another. Dan Ott in a good spot at our featured table, trying to turn his first main event into a championship. I'm pretty proud of like just how far I've come. I didn't expect it, and like I'm here now. So it's a pretty proud moment, you know. If I made the final table, emotionally, I mean, I'd be, I'd be really happy. I'm just trying to just play my game and just keep going. Movie-wise, he says he loves psychological thrillers. The main event is a psychological thriller. Pennsylvania Poker Pro and his twin brother Cash in the World Series Tag Team event. That was Dan Ott's first ever World Series of Poker Cash, and here he is deep in the main event with Ace King raised to 1.1 million. Ruan folds. Damian Salas, 6-5. Salas trying to become the first Argentinian to make the main event final table. I want that jacket. Payout now for busting is over a half million bucks. Blumstein now in the small blind. Jack of hearts, king of spades. Blumstein and Ott, two 25-year-olds, two East Coasters, two first-timers at this main event. Blumstein, the big stack at this table. He's third overall. His instincts have been pretty right on in the hands we've seen leading up to this day. And there's a re-raise. Okay, they're not always working perfectly. 3.4 million. Blumstein not showing much respect for Ott's early position raise. Says, let's play a big one. Back to Ott. Now the original raiser under the gun plus one with Ace King. Ott has two dogs, Hershey and Shiloh. Dogs are good energy, Lon. They, they don't care if you dunk off all your chips. They still support you no matter what. Blumstein could use a dog. Actually, so could Michael Ruan. <laughs> Indeed. And look at that. A four bet to 8.1 million. Now we got to find out just how sticky Blumstein can be. Well, Ott not showing much respect for Blumstein's lack of respect. Says, let's play a bigger one. Does he believe Dan Ott? Both eyeing each other. And I'm not sure either one likes what he sees. Blumstein's got himself in a bad spot here. All in. 
And Scott just made it worse. Ott calls all in with Ace King in great shape for a huge double up. Yeah, as you mentioned, Blumstein has shown us some pretty good reads, but here he steps out of line and he has dominated 45 million chip pot. Yeah, Scott tried to use the monster stack to push Ott off, but Dan was not going anywhere. And he's going to be either out of the main event or in third place. The beardless twin, Dylan, on the rail. Well, at least Blumstein has enough chips to cover his mistake. A big misstep from Blumstein. Ott looking to double up. There's the flop. And an ace there for Ott to put a hammer lock on this double up. Let's go. And this guy wants to be my kid brother. Ha! Well, Blumstein can only hope to learn from his misstep there and rebound. Ott just needs to avoid runner runner, and he's fine. I thought he was bluffing me. I know. Well, he did not believe Dan Ott pre-flop. Deuce of clubs on the turn. That will do it. Ott with the official double up to put a good size dent nice into Blumstein stack. How much? Dan Ott will stack the chips. And Blumstein's not a popper, but he's going to feel that one. Big double up for Ott, and it'll be interesting to see how Scott Blumstein reacts to this setback. He's been riding a big stack for a long time, now down to 32 big blinds. And off the virtual final table, sitting behind just 16 million, Ott's going to need some time to organize his 45 million chips. Ace King pays off big time. If Ott goes on to win this thing, this untimely shove from Blumstein just might be the reason. One of the biggest pots of the tournament goes to Dan Ott. Shock and awe running through the reel right now. The only constant is the expectation that change will happen. It happened to Scott Blumstein a moment ago, but Jack Sinclair does continue to captain this main event cruise with almost 68 million chips. Can't always show you all the exciting moments when they happen. Here's one we missed earlier on day seven. Scott Stewart and Pedro Oliveira had a little back and forth at an outer table. <laughs> and I like the boss. Oliveira has a tilting style. He'll not only bluff you, he'll not only show you the bluff, he will rub your nose in it. Yeah, the early position razor here is Pedro with less than premium holdings. Folded to John Hesp in the big blind with pocket nines. Blinds are up to 300, 600,000 with a 100K ante. Oliveira, 32-year-old Portuguese pro who just moved to Brazil. Here's the flop. Jack 7-8. Hesp adds a gut shot to his pocket pair. Hesp, 64-year-old British amateur who just moved to Xanadu. <laughs> John checks. Hoodie, headphones, shades. Stop me, Lon. Stop! Thank you. Oliveira with a continuation bluff of 1.5 million. Raise it. John's go-to move, the check raise. Yeah, what do you think you're playing with kids? John Hess was check raising customs officials 10 minutes after he landed in Vegas. <laughs> and I love the Min check raise. I have a new book coming out called The Min Check Raise. Phil Helmuth wrote the foreword, and he's also on the front and back covers. <laughs> what do you have, my friend? Well, sometimes you have to pay to look. Sometimes you have to pay to look. Sometimes I show. So you make the decision whether you I'm not going to tell you before the hands. The proper straight. The proper straight. No comments. No comments. This is so unnecessary. Oliveira is folding. This Hollywooding is so bad, it's Burbanking. <coughs> <laughs> My friend, you don't bluff, right? You never bluff? Do you ever buff? Have you not played me? I, ne I never, it's the first time, my friend, unfortunately. I'm, I'm, I'm very unpredictable. I understand, I understand. I'm, I'm unpredictable too. Well, there we are, we may be. That's what we have in common. I have placed my re-raise, and you have the decision to make, not me. He's already made his decision. He also probably knows what he's ordering for dinner tonight. It's a valid point. Ladies and gentlemen. I've been... I've been, I love this guy all day. I was up there with him earlier. 
He was great. There is the fold, yes. You see it later on TV. No, not to see. If I don't no, win, no, no, I win. No. Later. Well, how do you You'll see this later. What happened? You, you get I, him. I, you get him, huh? He's not sure where yeah. I got him, and I'm not. I, I think I did, but well, I got him, him huh? because I came and off he the lost top. Pay for the bet. But oh, I should have bet him, man. You didn't take it. Didn't I thought it was implicit. <laughs> For those of you who haven't checked it out yet, Poker Go is the only place you'll get more than 100 days of live poker a year and the best and original poker programming. Subscribe to Poker Go today at PokerGo.com. To the seven-handed main feature table, Scott Blumstein may have found some salve for the wounds inflicted by Dan Ott a short time ago. Pocket Kings. Scott gives credit to his friend, 2015 WPT Titleist Asher Khanna for helping his game. Under the gun, plus two, a raise to 1.3 million. Ben Lamb has been very quiet on day seven. Not much going on for him. Indeed. Stewart folds to Dan Ott in the small blind. King Jack. Oh, Ott now with King Jack offsuit. It's not a good hand. Yeah, it's the hand Blumstein got out of line with against him. <laughs> He's pulling a Blumstein here, a re-raise to 3.1 million. Hey, this time Ott not showing much respect for Blumstein's early position raise, and he says, let's play a big one. Yeah, using some of Scott's former chips against him, and Norman, it looks like those chips may have just been loner chips. Of course, Blumstein with the image of a wild card, someone who might bluff off all his chips, and we saw Scott five bet all in with King Jack offsuit against Ott. And here is just a call with oh. the Kings. Blumstein getting sneaky and tricky and crafty and wily and slippery. Heads up. These two go to the flop again. 10-6-4. Ten, 10 high flop is all good for Blumstein. It's Ott continuing now. He took control pre-flop. And now leads out 2.4 million. Lon, I think we want to add King Jack to our list of hands that can't win, along with Ace Queen and Pocket Jacks. I totally agree with you. How ugly is this going to get for Dan Ott? And Scott not going deep into his stack. Yeah, just a call. Boy, Blumstein really underrepresenting the strength of his hand. That is sneaky and tricky and crafty and wily and slippery. Ott open-ended now. Well, Ott picks up a lot of equity there. Let's see if he wants to continue with his Jack Sinclair impersonation. I'm all in. All in! And a call! And Blumstein with the best of it, but he's also at risk of losing it all. The shoe now on the other foot, and it appears to be Scott Blumstein's size. Wow, how casually they move mountains of chips, Norman. Yeah, these guys appear to be allergic to holding onto a big stack. Well, Blumstein has to like his chances, but it could all come crashing down with a bad river card. Ott's shove was industrious, but he's got outs. What a sweat. King Jack, that's a good hit, man. I like that. Hey, uh, yeah, you know, we both need to... To write a book or something, I think. Ott uh, looking for an ace or a nine to wipe the smile off of Scott Blumstein's face. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, baby. Right back. Blumstein bounces back, and it's poetic justice. Same opponent with King Jack again overplayed. A full and complete double up to put Scott back up to where he was almost before he doubled up Ott. Scott can now play his game. Ott absorbs the loss, but still sits in fifth position. My other new book is called Why King Jack Can't Win. Halnus also on the cover of that one. Nothing you can do, man. I mean, the King Jack giveth and the King Jack... Starting to feel like our table yesterday all over again. Away. I know. A tale of King Jack and two acts. Act one, Blumstein decimates his stack, giving life to Dan Ott. Act two, Dan Ott returns the favor. Let's this go. is so Let's main go. event. Come on. The King Jack giveth and the King Jack starting to feel like our table yesterday all over. Take it away. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokergo.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription.
Welcome back to Las Vegas. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad, Kara Scott, and Joe Stapleton. 13 players left at this 2017 main event. Scott Blumstein finds himself back in the top three after his Kings win a huge pot. John Hess's dream ride continues. Antoine Saoud and Ben Lamb still in position to make their second main event final table. And can Michael Ruan hang on and crawl through to complete his improbable bid for back-to-back -back final tables here? Sinclair and Hess up top. The Brits continue to run the show. Benjamin Polak in sixth place. His game seems very well suited for this long format. Kara Scott has more on this talented pro from France. Day seven has been very kind to Benjamin Pollock. He told me that it feels incredible. Everything is going right for him at the table. Normally, playing tournaments, it's not quite this magic, but he's not complaining. He did a short workout again on the dinner break, just enough to get moving, work up a sweat, and help him focus his mind. And now, he says he's fresh again like it's a brand new day. This guy looks fresh enough to me. He doesn't need to be any more fresh. The fresh French pro is a good friend with and a traveling buddy of Antoine Saoud. He's in the big blind with eight, six, off and he's going to call for 700,000 as Sinclair opened with Queen Jack. Five do seven. Polak open ended. Sinclair with two overs. Check to Sinclair. Check. And he checks back. Polak misses his draw. Sinclair with top pair. Polak seems to play the right combo of hands. Uh, he seems like the prototypical tight aggressive player of years past. Or maybe he's loose aggressive and just does a great job masking his prowess. The French, man, they are so confusing. A million six now from Benjamin on the draw. You know, if Jack Sinclair is so embarrassed by the tattoo he got on the left side of his neck, he shouldn't <laughs> have gotten a tattoo in the first place. Sinclair with the best hand, just calls. Seeing a different tact here. Somebody is trying to bluff Jack. River card, and Polak dredges the river for the straight. The semi-bluff bailout, available worldwide. And Jack Sinclair has no idea what just hit him. Benjamin Polak coming in with almost 26 million chips beginning this hand. Sinclair with almost 66 million. A hefty bet with that very well hidden Five straight. Million. Five million. Five. When Jack scrunches his face, he usually doesn't call. Five? Is Jack trying to see under the cards in <laughs> Polak's hand? That, that's a great idea. Five million? Carr and Sarkeesian just called the clock on Jack from the parking lot. <laughs> Uh-oh, chips in hand and calls. Sinclair found a fold against Saud's full house. Can't blame him for not finding a fold here. Polak with a nice pot. Yeah, he takes that, which will put him into third place with nearly 35 million chips. It's really no surprise to see Benjamin Polak doing well at the main event. He's been here before. The last time in 2013, uh, I finished 27. I made the day seven like today. Um, at that time, I felt very focused and very prepared for that. But unfortunately, when I came to play, I busted on the third end of the day. And I felt like very like, you know, I kind of had my chance, you know, like I didn't even play the day seven. It was very like painful for me. So today I'm going for it, I'm prepared for it. And I just want to go to the final table. Hold it now to Polak seven. with Jack 10 in the small blind. Good luck. And he raises Pacholi all in. All right, he put me in. Pacholi with just 12 bigs left. Pacholi looks down at King Queen, and they're all in. Pacholi could be going home right here. Let's go, home. Let's go, home. Let's go home. Come on. Let's go home. We're all in. We're all in. It's a festive all in. King Queen suited. Polak is going to have to get lucky to knock off Brian. Good luck. Good luck. It's just the gentleman thing you said. Blind versus blind? Is that, am I dreaming? Well, these guys are just too nice. Good to see. I think we're going to have a sweet cup. All right, here's the flop. Pacholi at risk. 
Pacholi with two pair. Mm. Polak still better looking. King 8-8. Eight eight. Oh, you need no diamond. No diamond. None of them. None of diamonds. None of them. None of diamonds. Just make it fun. Queen of then diamonds. Me. Queen of diamonds. Poker players are brutal. The tray gives Pacholi the official double up. Polak drawing dead. The San Diego Pro has life again. Yep, he's got a little breathing room. He'll sit down behind nearly 16 million. Polak takes it in stride. He's in sixth place still overall. Yeah, boy. Confused Panda. Confused Panda. Not sure what Confused Panda's all about, but if it means Patrolli's alive and well, then Confused Panda it is. There's been an outpouring of emotion here on day seven. Everyone can taste that final table in 8.15 million. No doubt each competitor knows this may be their best shot of ever winning this title. Not too many people get second chances, though this year Antoine Saoud, Ben Lamb, and Michael Ruan may make repeat final table appearances. Ruan has the action. Average stack right now, about 28 million. Pocket sevens for Ruan. Let me give you those micro Ruan numbers again. The chance of making the main event final table last year was one in 750. The chance of making it this year, one in 800. So the chance that someone can make both final tables back to back, one in 600,000. Plumstein has the action. He folds to Ben Lamb in the big blind. Ben looks down at Ace, deuce off. Lamb's been spinning his wheels tonight. Started day seven with 25 million chips, now has 22 million. By the way, the chances of Ben making the final table of any tournament he enters is like one in six. <laughs> you like Ben Lamb. Why not? He's terrific when he plays tournaments, and he hardly ever does. He's a great cash game player, and he's good at all the games. Now Ben Lamb, who has been silent as a lamb lately. It looks like he wants to get busy. A re-raise to four million. Both these players with under average stacks. Well, Ruan's a little short for Lamb to be doing this to, but maybe you can argue that Michael wants to make the final table as much as anyone, given the history involved, and might fold more hands in this spot. Ruan's sitting on 25 bigs. All in. Not All in. folding is Michael Ruan playing back at Lamb. I don't think there's a call in Ben's future here. And the thing is, when you three bet, get four bet, it's like pushing the wrong button in the elevator. You just want the ride to end and, and get another chance at it, but you have to wait it out a little first. Then the next time, you'll be extra careful and push the right button. Exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Lamb does fold a nice try, Ben, but you got caught. Ruan onto the virtual final table with 21 and a half million chips. He is intense. Do not want to cut him off on the Jersey Turnpike. Lamb hangs on in ninth place, but he's feeling the loss of that four million chip three bet. As a reminder for unlimited access to more of the best in live poker all year long, get in the game with Poker Go. Subscribe today at PokerGo.com. There you see the names of the three players dancing on the knife edge of this main event. Stuart Dubini and Pacioli, the three shortest stacks, with Ace King is the chip leader, Jack Sinclair, under the gun. Sinclair got to play with Mickey Kraft earlier in the main event, and Jack says, no surprise here, Mickey is his favorite player ever. <laughs> Sinclair with a raise to a million five. John Hesp with King Jack, the hand of the hour, comes along. Have we seen Sinclair win a pot off Hesp yet? I don't think so. And Jack is very tired of it. Here is the flop and a Jack, of course, for Hesp as he hits the flop. Have we seen Sinclair win a pot off of Hesp yet? 1.5. A million five from Hesp here. I think John is Jack's second favorite player behind Mickey Kraft, but he just cannot beat him. John usurping Jack's continuation bet after the flop. Jack comes along with Ace King. Turn card. Tray of spades, both with flush draws. Sinclair has the ace high draw. And not a lot of cards that Jack would have folded on the turn. And this one does give him the ace high flush draw. Three million is the bet from Hesp. Three million is the call from Jack. 
Rivercard another tray. So Hesp has the best of it with Jacks up. Have we seen Sinclair win a pot off of Hesp yet? <laughs> Three million. Quick fold, Jack has learned his lesson. Would you like to see? Uh, yes, I would. Good hand. Uh, I should fold. Well, I guess. <laughs> I'm pretty bad, pretty bad. John Hasp, it's incredible. And with that exchange of chips, the British flag remains atop the leaderboard, but it's John Hasp's name with it. A good flop, a little chip extraction. Hasp continues his winning ways. Not much pool time for the poker players these days. Long hours and big money keep them inside. At the main feature table, Scott Blumstein raised with King Queen of Clubs. Scott Stewart on the button with Ace Long. Nine off and very few chips, and they're all in the middle now. Long Beach, California Pro started this hand with 13 bigs. On day one, a guy at his table called him Monster Man and Big Guy all day, and by the end of the night was calling him Beard of Knowledge. <laughs> that does appear to be a Fulbright Scholar beard he has. Hot folded King Queen suited. So back to Blumstein. 7.725. About 17% of Blumstein's stack. And with his King Queen suited, he makes the call, but he's going to need to find something on the board that works to knock off Stewart and his Ace Nine. Stewart doubled through Blumstein earlier on day seven with Jacks versus Nines. Looking for a reprise double up here. Ace from space, baby. <laughs> Unknown to Blumstein, two of his outs were folded by Dan Ott. May the best Scott win. Touche, sir. Touche. All right, here we go. Bittersweet for Stewart. Top pair, but it also brings a club draw to Blumstein. Scott Stewart in a good mood, even though his main event is still in peril. He's got a club. Red card. Red. Ten of diamonds. Stewart's ace is holding up in his double up bid. But more outs to dodge for Stewart. Stewart's got to fade jacks and clubs. The river card is a club! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Blumstein Ooh. gets there with a flush. Scott Stewart out in 13th. Great run for the likable 29-year-old. Hey, man, we had some fun hands yesterday. Yeah. Thanks, man. It was a pleasure, man. Hey. Played amazing. Good play, man. Hey, it was nice playing with you. Good job, man. Dan? It's a pleasure, man. Scott Stewart, a very fine player. It's a career best cash out of 535 grand. Scott Blumstein has recovered nicely from his King Jack implosion. That's how you should go out. Indeed, something to celebrate. Blumstein approaching 55 million, and boy, he didn't stay down for long, did he? Stewart's elimination leaves us with two tables of six. Hess, Sinclair, and Blumstein all over 50 million chips. John Hess on top of the main event with 12 players left. It feels like fantasy land. And will the poker gods leave room for Antoine Saoud, Michael Rouen, and Ben Lamb to all make a second main event final table? From the Rio, we'll play down to a final table. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman, Chad, Kara Scott, and Joe Stapleton. There they are. Brian Pacioli seeking a final table reservation. This is not dinner, this is the main event. Where have you guys been all day? <laughs> First timer Jack Sinclair has second place chips. Okay, now we're talking poker. And this kid is good, plus that name, Jack Sinclair. But the real talk of the main event is that guy, chip leader John Hess. Las Vegas is a town of odds, but I don't think John Hess leading the main event with 12 players remaining would have gone a single bet. It's just that improbable. First place money is more than $8.1 million, and it's closer than ever for our 12 survivors to this point. We've seen a lot of Scott Blumstein over the last day or so, fearless and talented. 
I like this kid. We don't talk about Moxie anymore. Moxie isn't fashionable. No one cares about Moxie, but I still do, and this kid has it. He does have it, and he has Chip Scott third on the leaderboard, one of three players above 50 million. Michael Ruan with just under 18 million in eighth. The short stack is Richard Dubini. He and Damian Salas each trying to become the first from Argentina to ever make the main event final table. The oversized chips are the ones to collect. Yellow's worth a million, red a half million. Two tables of six. When we reduce the field to 10 players, they will combine at this table. Blumstein, second to act, 8-7 of spades. 25-year-old New Jersey pro. Black Friday shut down online for him. Then New Jersey legalized it and opened it up again. A raise to 1.3 million. Once he's there, he's tough to get off a hand. Fold it to Dan Ott, another first-timer, a seven of hearts. 25-year-old Pennsylvania pro also cut his poker teeth online. With every step forward, it's uncharted territory for these two. Folded back around to Blumstein. How much are you playing? I think like 30. In auto racing, they call it trading paint. Aggressive driving, lots of bumping. At this main event, we call it Ott Blumstein. <laughs> they keep running into each other. Two top stacks. Scott has a lot more than Dan. Blumstein does call. The flop, Jack 6-6. Six, six. Both miss the rainbow board. Ace high is good to this point for Ott. I would say Blumstein largely missed that flop. Yeah, I would think so. And he will check. I would say Ott largely missed that flop. Did indeed. The pre-flop aggressor bets 2.1 million. And Scott Blumstein is going to stick around for some reason. Blumstein called with Squad Douche after Ott bet with Squad Douche. This is Squad Douche 101. Turn card is the king of diamonds. Ace high still best for Dan Ott. Another check from Blumstein. Well, Scott had called with eight high. There's a fine line between dangerous and wild, and Scott walking that line. I guess his plan is if Ott checks the turn, he would bet the river and hope to win. 5.9. No check there. 5.9 million. Well, maybe his plan is to check raise the turn and blow the roof off the Rio. That would be something. Nice one. But Scott's going to give it up. Not going to be gifting any more chips this close to the final table. Ott has mentioned all his bluffs are getting through, and he is right. Got it through. Got it through. Sweating a little more now. I am. Keep getting out, get it in, you sweat. I know. The last seven days it has been much easier just. Day seven is the culmination of a week's worth of hard poker work, but the reward could be huge, a guaranteed million dollars if you make the final table. And for the winner, poker immortality plus 8.15 million bucks. Not bad at all. But as we look back over the years, Norman, what kind of player makes a main event final table? The great thing about poker is that there is no one style that works. As long as you're zigging when everyone is zagging. What if you zag when everyone's... Hey, hey, I'm in the middle of something. As long as you're zigging when everyone is zagging, you have a chance. John Hesp, he has a chance. No one can figure him out. Jack Sinclair has a chance. No one can figure him out. But it's Scott Blumstein who is catching my eye of late. Dangerous, wild, smart, at times reckless. That's what it takes. So straightforward players with no imagination will never make it. Now I know why you've stayed in the booth with me. Good for you. Back at the featured table, the hours on the grind are adding up. Poker pros will tell you that great value can be had in the late night hours of a game if you're up to the task. Richard Dubini with Queens. Down to 15 bigs and short stack. The 32-year-old Argentine pro's earbuds are out. He's totally focused on the game. A million two from the Argentine pro. He's made three World Series final tables in the last couple of summers. I want that jacket. <laughs> Another player from Argentina. What are the odds? Salas folds to Blumstein. And Blumstein, the big stack at the table, north of 80 big blinds. Ace, deuce of spades in the big blind, playing a little lighter in the chip stack now. All in. He puts Dubini all in, and Dubini calls with the Queens. Yes, Scott picked the wrong time to be the big stack bully. I don't know. Maybe I should have defended. He opened off of like 12 bigs, and I had an ace in the big. Like, I mean, obviously, I, I don't. Do you have aces? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a huge jump, so. I, and he wants to be my kid brother. I don't know. I know. I mean, it, it's going to come. I'm just going to flop an ace. 
You just get lucky and win this thing. That's how it works. Dubini looking for the double up. We'll talk about the, the strat later. There it is. And there is the ace. It's a skill game. Blumstein said it. I'm just going to flop an ace. Uh, a little sick to his stomach, kind of resigned to his fate, but hoping for a good sign. King of Diamonds does Dubini no good. Always a sweat. Blumstein and his rail sitting pretty right now. Dubini's rail sitting on edge. Dubini has to have a queen. The river card is paint, but a jack. Blumstein wins the hand with the smallest of aces, and Dubini comes up empty. Dubini deserved better. Then again, we all do. He did not come up empty on the payout, though. 535 grand for 12th place. Blumstein shows that sometimes your lucky side overcomes your reckless side. He is feeling it and feeling it from the top shelf of the leaderboard right now. Can't lose, man. After that King Jack, you can't lose. I'm due. <laughs> what a comeback. Yeah. Welcome back to Las Vegas the day before the final table. Just 11 players left, led by Morristown, New Jersey native Scott Blumstein. Tensions getting high, big money all around. Brian Pacioli has mostly flown under the radar at this main event, despite being one of the chip leaders last year. He's a solid pro who clearly knows how to navigate these big fields. When he won his Asia Pacific bracelet in 2013, Jonathan Duhamel was fourth, Antoine Saud 13th. Brian didn't play as much poker this year because he spent a lot of time with his dad, Dan, as he recovers from a spinal cord injury. Fold it to Brian in the small blind at the six-handed table. He's got pocket eights. All in. Short stack of the remaining players. Yeah, he's all in for eight million six fifty. Petroli pushes with 14 bigs. He's been grinding the short stack all day. Antoine Saoud in the big blind with a small ace. Well, with an ace and nearly 60 bigs, this is an easy call for Antoine. And there it is, the weak ace will try to eliminate Petroli. It worked for Blumstein earlier against Dubini. Pacioli was 84th in last year's main event. He does not want to finish 11th in this one. Brian seems pleased with his standings in the pocket eights. I'm just saying. Don't say anything. Pacioli confidently sits back down, figuring he's not going anywhere. But a similar situation just busted Richard Dubini. I want to pick already today. I love squares against the case from the water. What do you think? You went good or not? I'm confident with you. Saud with the ace four, trying to knock off Pacioli with his pocket eights. And here is the fob and ace, another ace! Trip aces for Saud! And Brian Pacioli absorbs that jarring moment, his main event all but over. Pacioli now hanging on a two-outer, queen of hearts, Saud. One card from the knockout. Pacioli ruefully accepting his fate. Just an unmistakably awful feeling. Saud, another step closer to another final table. An eight and an eight only would rescue Brian Pacioli. The river card now. Oh, an eight! Oh! An electrifying eight, an exhilarating eight, saves Brian Pacioli. Let's go! Let's go! Oh, my! Brian is still in it. Well, he'll still be grinding the small stack, and you've got to feel for Saud. Saud's still in it, but 25% lighter now. I love you! I love you! Brian Pacioli loves everybody right now. He didn't stand up. He didn't call for his one time, but it worked out for Brian Pacioli. A miracle eight keeps him in the main event. The flop looked bleak for Brian Pacioli, but the river delivered. Oh, 
what a turn of events for Pacioli. Looks like he's still in a state of disbelief. He stays in the main event for now alongside his friend, Michael Ruan. Michael Ruan and I, I love the kid to death. We're, we're very good friends. We met each other eight years ago. He went to Burning Man one year with us, with the, our whole crew. So he knows what that's like. We've had a lot of good times together. If he makes back-to-back -back final tables in like, you know, this day and age or whatever, that is just, that's, that's insane. You may recall Ruan misplaced his sneakers last year on day six, so Pacholi lent him his. Ruan went on to the final table. Pacholi went home barefoot. The eight on the river there denied everyone else a pay bump of 150 grand for the moment. Back to the feature table, five-handed under the gun. Ruan with aces. Good news for one of the short stacks. Ruan and Pacholi both seeking day seven memories. Ruan looking to make history. Pacholi looking to redeem himself from his flame out last year. Ruan's raise is matched by Lamb's call with pocket tens, and so these two will see a flop. You have 18. Heads up action. Uh, probably a little more. All right, now the flop. No improvement for Lamb. Ruan didn't need to improve. Check to Ruan. Even if Ruan falls short of this final table, his feet might surpass Mark Newhouse's 2013-14 feet. Newhouse finished ninth in a field of 6,300, then ninth again in a field of 6,600. Ruan was fourth last year in a field of 6,700, and 11th or better this year in a field of 7,200. It is amazing. Two million now on that rainbow flop, about half the pot from Ruan. So Newhouse faced a combined 13,000 entrants, Ruan a combined 14,000. Both of them just remarkable. With the pocket tens, Lamb's gonna come along. Have I mentioned how intense Mike Ruan is? Oh boy. Tray of diamonds on the turn. Lamb started day seven with 25 million chips. He's under 20 million now and in danger of losing many more. He checks it again to Michael. Both these guys with virtually identical stacks. Lamb with like 300,000 more than Ruan. But Ruan with the aces here. He bets four and a half million. Lamb also looking for his second main event final table. Can you count that, please? Okay, will you break it down? Can I break it down? Or? I cannot? Okay. I can't break it down? No. He would have to? Okay. How many yellows does he have? I really can't get a count? I'm asking for a count of his chips. I, I don't know if it's nine or ten yellows. It makes a difference. There has to be a way for a player to get a chip count. Ben can't ask the player. He can't ask the dealer. That's really the rule. I can't count him. He can't ask the TD, and he can't touch Michael's chips himself. Does Max Silver have an app for this? <laughs> it's like playing the game without a scoreboard. <laughs> if Ruan was from Oklahoma, he would tell Ben how many chips he had, but... New Jersey has their own thing going on. Too many years of paying the tolls on the turnpike, if you ask me. <laughs> well, Lamb, not happy with anything that went down in this hand, and he does lay it down, bit steamed. He's not happy, but that is potentially a tournament-saving fold there. Well, good. I'll just keep mine like this, then. That way no one knows what I have. That's as testy as I've ever seen Ben get. Ruan onto the virtual final table in eighth. Lamb now the overall short stack at 16 million. To the other table now John Hess flopped a club flush. Pedro Oliveira turned aces up. This could get ugly for Pedro. Portuguese pro who says my life is poker. Hess checked it. Pedro with 2.2 million now more than half the pot. Hess once again showing his Lee Strasberg Actors Studio skills. He usually raises after this theater. Raise. There you go. Five million. He's checked raise several times. Most of the time we've seen that he has it. Oliveira in treacherous territory right here. He's got about 20 big blinds left. Hess remains the X factor. He says all in. And the call, Pedro Oliveira at risk and behind. Yeah, eventually all of us must answer to John Hess. <laughs> Oliveira might have thought Hess was overvaluing a big ace and obviously thought his aces up were good. 
Well, should Hesp get this knockout, all 10 survivors will come together at a single table. Oliveira needs an ace or a nine, or he is wamboozled. The River 8 does not save Oliveira. Hesp with a knockout, Pedro gone in 11th. Great run for Pedro Oliveira. 11th place worth 675 grand. And how about that? John Hesp will come together with the final 10 as the chip leader. John Hesp's yellow brick road journey just keeps picking up speed. He's unstoppable. John Hesp now with almost 72 million chips. I don't think he could believe it. The Bridlington boss is at it again. A flop flush sends Oliveira out, leaving us one knockout shy of the final table. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. One table remains, but it's not the true final table. That requires one more elimination. 825000 for 10th, a guaranteed million if you make the final nine. Well, it's a million, but after taxes, it's like 77000 Hesp is the leader. Lamb the short stack. Ruan one knockout from back-to-back -back final tables. So out and Lamb looking for a second main event final table for first-timers here. Pacholi folds. Ott gets rid of it. Raise. And John will raise with pocket eights. 1.5 million. You know that that River 8 Pacholi hit recalled for me 2003? Chris Moneymaker was all in with pocket eights against Umberto Brennis' pocket aces on a king nine deuce flop and spiked an eight on the turn. Saved our careers. <laughs> wow, so Oot says no to Jack 10 suited. We are on the main event final table bubble. Always counts on you, Jack. With pocket nine, Sinclair is certainly in the hand. Solace in the big blind. If I had that jacket 20 years ago, I might have gotten married twice in one year. <laughs> Does he want to go against those monster stacks? He's already got money in with a blind, and he'll come along for 900,000 more. Three-way action. And that flop misses all three. Salas on the cusp of becoming the first Argentinian to make the main event final table. He checks king high. The original razor, John Hesp, with the smaller pocket pair to Sinclair's. That's three million. Sinclair locking horns again with Hesp. And Jack has lost a horn or two along the way. He has indeed. Just calls again. Salas should fold sometime this millennium. And he does. So heads up, nines against eights. Turn card now. The ace of diamonds. And now John Hesp. Sinclair, incidentally, was voted most likely to dust off a stack by his peers. Three million. Well, John staying aggressive with the inferior hand. Sinclair looking at Hesp, and, and what he sees is a one-part Rubik's Cube, one-part Rorschach test. Hesp is Kevin Clunder-esque. Actually, that can't be good. <laughs> Sorry? You like, you like the ace, huh? I'm watching. You, your eyes are starting to twitch, Jack. <laughs> You're saying you have a read? I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying your eyes are starting to twitch. Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> you do it, you can't stop it, can you? Uh, okay, John. You just, every, would, every hand we play, would you you like, would, I don't know why I keep playing positive. Would you like to see the hand? Uh, I mean, yeah, listen, that was a tough I've call, been yeah. told by my advisor that I'm showing too many hands, but for, just well, for fun, would you, who wants to see the hand? Yeah, well, I want to see it. What do you think we've got here? <laughs> ace, 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 ace nine. Ace, ace jack. Yeah. Seven, eight, oh. Oh. Blue. Brutal. Yeah, blue. Uh, nice. You know, if Sinclair had not played a single day seven hand against Hesp, I believe he would have 400 million chips right now. <laughs> Sick bet. How did he know that I twitch, man? Uh, I'm wearing sunnies. I'm wearing sunglasses from now on. Jack's left eye was twitching. 
John Hess gets stronger in the chip leader role. For those of you who haven't checked it out yet, Poker Go is the only place you'll get more than 100 days of live poker a year and the best and original poker programming. Subscribe to Poker Go today at PokerGo.com. Blinds are up now for an 800,000 with a 100K ante. Just get this round to the camera. Under the gun is John. Chip leader looks down at pocket eights again. Raise. I'm guessing 1.5 million. 1.5 million. It's gotta be 1.6 now. Oh, sorry, man. Oh, the yeah. big blind's 800,000. The legal raise is 1.6 million. Oh, it's his right. Well, well, see, John and I are cash game players. The blinds never change. Does anybody want to play with John Hesp? Not this time, Jack. <laughs> What is Solace wearing? I'm not sure, but I think it is the color of the Argentinian national flag. What, he thinks I can't see the jacket anymore? I'm still taking it. <laughs> Pacholi gives it up around to the big blind, Dan Ott. Ace four off. And he'll call with a weak ace. They keep running these young punks up against John Hesp, and he keeps swatting them away and stepping on their neck. All right, here's the flop. And oh my, again, Hess scores middle set. It's checked to him. He checks back. Wow. Hess has flopped 172 sets at this main event, and he has checked 170 of them. <laughs> Odd pairs up on the turn and now commits a million. Raise it. Yep. John announces raise. Three million. Hess usually has it, and when he doesn't have it, he doesn't have it. Two million more from Ott, drawing dead. River card, queen of diamonds. Ott checks. Three million. Ott folds. Ott was trying to be a hero there, but he was up against a superhero. Who, who wants to see the cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wants to see these cards? What do you think? Oh, 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 oh. Yes! Of course. No set, no bet. So good. <laughs> He's such a sicko. You're right. What are you doing? This is how to play eights, right? I always just collect and cool down like a fish. One more time? What was the I didn't even see a flop. I don't think so. Yeah, we still flopped. Yeah, we still was a turn as well. I flopped, I flopped the eights. That's the flop. Oh, the I flopped the same, yes. Bed and raise. Yeah. Oh, wow. The bracelet looms large over this remaining field, and so too does $8.15 million. There are the chip counts of the entire main event field, all 10. John Hess making everyone forget about the skills of Blumstein. Looks like Pacholi's gonna raise and take it. Oh. Why are they clapping? Why are they clapping? <laughs> <laughs> Did I not just say I need aces? <laughs> I mean, and they held. I mean, this is going to be a fun final table is what I'm quickly learning. <laughs> this could be what poker needs. Yeah, well, it's, a, it, it, I, it's fun. Yeah? Yeah, take the money out and just have a I good time. That's what I, just, I understand I money, it's a serious thing, it's money, but if you can have a light in the, the game, it, everybody's happy. Money comes and goes. It mostly goes. Our friends are forever. Lon, I love you. Back to action here, ten-handed Ruan, ace jack of diamonds. One of these ten will not make the final table. Who will walk down the boulevard of despair? A raise to two million with ace jack suited. Lon, can you name the last three main event final table bubble boys? No, but I can name your last three ex-wives. I don't have three ex-wives. Have you checked your voicemail this morning? Pacholi folds, Ott folds. The last three 10th place finishers at the main event, Luis Velador, Alexander Toriansky, Josh Weiss. Blumstein gives it up. Do we think Saud sleeps on his right side so that he can keep the earbud in? <laughs> Most definitely. In the big blind. Antoine folds. How far away are we from earbud implants? <laughs> It'll be heads up, Ruan and Hesp. I do love you. 
All hearts, all small cards. He worried about the eights, Michael. Had them try. <laughs> They both check. Another six on the turn. Sometimes you check to induce. Other times you check because you just can't put any more chips in the pot. Roran is in the latter category right here. And that means that Hesp will bet after another check from Michael. Hesp using position and his big stack. Roran likely to use his folding option here. Yeah, he can't continue. He's got to look for another spot. Oh, you don't, I'm not sure this time. No, I'm not showing this time. TV how can, how can you get eights that often? It ah, well, you have to wait and see. You don't. You look. I'm not saying what I have that. Believe. You have to guess what I have the eights. I had them twice. It's always possible three times. You Who know can explain John's deep run here? Maybe it's the jacket. A friend of mine back in Bridlington. He was wearing this, and I actually complimented him on how how good he looked. And when he found out that I was coming to Vegas, he says, John, would you like to borrow my jacket and three shirts? He says, here you are, John. You can only have these if you promise to wear them. So I actually am doing it to some extent because I'm honoring a contract. He should monetize this, charge folks a $10 cover, two drink minimum, to come by his hotel room and look at his clothing closet in there. Well, it works for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why not the Poker Hall of Fame? For unlimited access to more of the best in live poker all year long, get in the game with Poker Go. Still 10-handed. Hesp has folded. He'll sit this hand out. Ott open for a million seven with ace nine. Action on Saud with ace queen. Saud has gone to double barreled earbud action on this final table bubble. He calls for a million three more. Benjamin Polak folds his big blind. Both of these stacks in the mid 20 million range. Ace queen against ace nine. And there is a queen and the flop for Saut. And the dreaded less than sign for Dan Ott. It's check to Dan. I know they call it a donk bet when you lead out on the flop out of position into the pre-flop razor, but why can't you do it once in a while if you think you have the best of it? Take matters into your own hands. You gotta mix up everything, right? A million four from Ott. Well, maybe that's why. Well, why can't you bluff out of position after the flop? Why can't you do whatever you damn well please? To heck with GTO. <laughs> so it just calls with middle pair, which is best. I'm going to lather. Turn card, another five. Queen's up now for Saud. He has Ott drawing dead. And he checks again on the paired board. And now Ott has some of those yellows worth a million each. His mom there and Dylan, his twin, watching closely. 4.8 million from Ott. Ott says all his bluffs have been getting through, but he is wading in deeper, more dangerous bluffing waters here. He might have to pedal back to shore on this one without many chips. A very hefty bet into the 8 million chip pot. Almost 5 million, and he does get Saud to fold the best hand. Very tight fold from Antoine Saud. And a well-earned pot for Ott. That seemed bluffy. Got that one through. He won the hand. No show now. He doesn't look like a bluffer, but he is a serial bluffer. You didn't have a king. You didn't? But you won the hand without a king? Sometimes he's going to make some moves. Still just one elimination from the final table. Welcome back to the Rio Lawn McCarran on hand with Norman Chad, Kara Scott, and Joe Stapleton as everyone looks for one more elimination to reach our final nine. Who will be the odd man out? With 91 million, Hess should be opening most pots when folded to him. Too many stacks trying to make the final nine. Three short stacks under 20 million. Ruan, Pacholi, and Lamb. And you saw Saud's tight fold there versus Ott, plus earlier Antoine laid down Jack-10 suited pre-flop with 40 big blinds. Pacholi, one of the short stacks, gives it up, as does Dan Ott. Now John Hesp. Raise it. Raise it. 1.5. 1.6, John, 1.6. I'm going to go for 1.5. <laughs> Blumstein now with pocket tens. With the second biggest stack, he would prefer not to tangle with the biggest stack, but Scott's got a hand. Hesp with the original raise with King-9 suited. 
with the pocket tens. That is a call. Now on the button, Antoine Saout. He's got an ace. Well, the way Antoine's been playing, ace eight off is an insta fold. It is a fold. Benjamin Polak in the small blind. Oh, Polak is dealt a hand before France leaves the EU. <laughs> Now, Jack Sinclair in the big blind. Jack, four off. Third biggest stack. Why would Jack Sinclair insta-fold Jack four off from the big blind when it's a raised pot? And Norman, it looks like he wants to challenge the only two with bigger stacks out of position. It's a sign of brilliance or insanity. <laughs> and a re-raise to 5.4 million. Squeeze! <laughs> oh, I love my guy, Jack Sinclair. Action on Hesp. Now he's got the big stack, but these are deep waters now, 10-handed. You got something this time, Jack. Got a hand. I think you do, yeah. I fold. Ah, the eye wasn't twitching. John's out. Now Blumstein with the 10s. Well, the only way Sinclair could beat Hesp is to get him to fold pre-flop. However, now there's Blumstein. Well, Blumstein just called the original raise with this pocket pair. And that is just a call with the tens here. Now plan A, the squeeze did not work for Jack Sinclair, but I'm sure he's got plan B. Jack has a lot of plans. Heads up to the flop now. Trey 7-9 Rainbow. Sinclair first to act here now. Jack B. Jack, 4 million. This is a good flop for Blumstein's pocket tens. As you said, it's a rainbow flop. They're all undercards. He's not going anywhere. Smallish bet, less than one third pot. Scott will come along with the call. Blumstein letting the aggressor be aggressive. Turn card six of spades. Both now pick up some equity with gut shots. Jack might slow down here, then again. He has picked up that gut shot. And my guy probably believes stop signs on the road are simply advisory. <laughs> Sinclair now seven and a half million, a tad more than one third pot. Well, my other guy here can play some poker, and he is sticky. Jack, do you know he's sticky? Quite an amazing pot developing between these two big stacks. Ten-handed, just one elimination from the final table. And there is the call for seven and a half million. At this point, Blumstein feels like something stuck to the bottom of Sinclair's shoe, and Jack can't scrape it off. Ace of clubs on the river. This pot is bigger than seven of the stacks in play. Jack Sinclair with Jack high. This is going to be the fourth barrel of Blarney he is firing. I mean, at this point, he really can't afford to check. Can ill afford to bet, but he's got to try to win this pot, and he does put in 13 million. And now a huge decision for Blumstein with the pocket tens. And look at the size of that pot. Not a folder. I don't know if you know that. Oh, Jack loved hearing that. I heard you do some some crazy things, man. All right. All right. I guess I'm going to have to decide at some point. You just have it. You just have the 5-8. The 5-8 eight. Eight suited. That's why you have a straight. You don't seem like the kind of guy who would give up, though. What are you, what are you, oh, you're that good? You have kings? You're that good? All right. Okay. Your reputation precedes you, sir. Jack can't like hearing that, either. <sighs> Scott calls and waits. What? Oh. Let's 
play some cards. Oh, that's got to feel good. And he's got a quarter of the chips in play. We've got a new man in charge, Scott Blumstein, with almost 97 million. Uh, Jack, can I, can I see you outside for a minute? Sinclair bit off more than he could chew. Nice call, man. Right. If anyone could make that call, it was Scott Blumstein. Wow, nearly 100 million chips, 10 players remaining. A raucous rail still buzzing about that last momentous tide-shifting hand between Blumstein and Sinclair. So you guys are real good friends? Yes. Very good. And you three better with Jack seven off? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you think you know someone. He brought it up. That's crazy. He really brought it up. From the big blind, too. Yeah. He could have just called like any reasonable human being would have done. That just goes to show you what kind of person he is. Well, one, there are no friends in poker. And two, Ruran's the kind of person who wants to make this final table again badly. Folded to that person, ace king off, Michael Ruan. And Michael with 21 big blinds left. And his buddy, Pacioli, the two short stacks, and Michael's all in for 18 million. Ben Lamb now. Can't play. Still doesn't know how many chips Ruan has. <laughs> Will you count that? That's 18. Now to Ruan's buddy. Brian Pacioli with pocket tens on the button. Oh, wow. What, what a time for these two buddies to pick up big hands. The two short stacks nearly evenly stacked on the main event final table bubble. What a decision for Brian. Well, aces, kings, queens, he's calling all in for sure in this spot. But something like pocket jacks or tens, I, I don't know. Plus, there is the dynamic that it's his good friend. And the dynamic of ten-handed. One away from this main event final table. Ruan's going, you would do this to me? <laughs> there is the all-in. Pacioli's at risk. The Queens. Ryan has two dust. Ruan seems rather dismayed that his buddy called with tens. You can feel the pain of that all-in call. They, they play for seven days. They both get to the edge of the promised land, and one of them has to prevent the other from getting there. Brutal. Ruan's fate of going back-to-back -back at the main event in his own hands if he can catch something here. This is a joyless flip. Yeah, no ace, no king for Ruan. Yeah, this is a tough moment for two guys who are pretty tight. Turn card now. Tension filling the room six of clubs. So two friends come down to the river. One almost all in, the other all in. Well, Pacioli is all in. And if Ruan cannot find an ace or a king on the river, he'll be down to a couple of big blinds in his bid for back-to-back -back main event final tables all but over. The river's the seven of hearts. Pacioli with the double up through Michael. Pacioli looks plaintively over to his buddy, but Ruan not in the mood. Pacioli leaps seven spots up the leaderboard. Michael Ruan, the super short stack. It's my year this year, buddy. Sorry. Ruan not in the mood. No glory for 10th. Oh, like a cat, man. You've built nine lives, haven't you? Yeah, I am like a cat. Yeah, without that River 8 earlier, Pacioli would have been gone. Michael with but two big blinds. Well, near certain elimination does not diminish Ruan's accomplishment. Fourth last year, likely 10th this year against Monster Fields. The other nine now smell blood in the water with the odds stacked so wildly against Ruan's survival. Action on Michael. A suited ace. Yep, million nine in the middle. Salas now with Jax. Okay, Damien, listen up. Let's take off the flag, take off the shades, take off the jacket, give me the jacket, and act on your hand before a NAFTA falls apart. Oh, 
Michael awaits his fate. I'm all in. And all in for almost 22 million from Salas. I imagine it's got to be aces or nothing after that for anyone else to get involved. Saud in the big blind. Gives it up, shows an ace, and Ruan at risk with a six. Yeah, Ruan waiting to see the bad news. Well, because of the blinds and antes, Ruan could effectively triple up here. Ruan packed to leave. Pacholi not happy for his friend, but it's all business, nothing personal. There's the flop. No ace to be found for Michael. Yeah, not a lot of good news in there from Michael Ruan. Come on. Salas seeking to become the first from Argentina to get to the main event final table. You'll remember Antoine flashed an ace when he folded. Segura. Michael with two outs. Segura. Damien basically asking the dealer to keep it clean and safe. Segura. Turn card nine of hearts. Ruan's main event comes down to one last river card. Segura. Ruan has to have an ace or it is over. Segura. The river card is a queen. Michael Ruan comes up achingly one spot short of back-to-back -back final tables. Salas with the knockout blow. And we have our 2017 main event final table. Lamb and Saud both with a second main event final table. Plumstein will be a force. And of course, John Hess will be there with the second biggest stack. I like. I hope he still loves me. He does. Enjoy this. I hope he still loves me. Scott Blumstein will lead everyone with nearly 100 million chips, followed by Hesp and the rest of the field lagging way behind. And Michael Rowan, I know it hurts right now, but you should bask in the glow of your achievement. Let's get it down to Kara Scott. She's not with a chip leader, but with the man of the hour. John Hess will be starting at our final table, second in chips, 85 million. Just give me what's going through your, your heart and your mind right now. Um, indescribable, absolutely <laughs> indescribable. I, I must have used all the words in my vocabulary to try and describe it, but I don't think I can, I can. it's just impossible. I've never known anything like this in my life, and it's so ridiculous. I can't, how ridiculous. How can I get here? Tonight we learned that one card can change a life. I'm just gonna pop an ace. It's a skill game. I love you. As 12 gave way to nine, friendships were tested. It's my year this year, buddy. Sorry. But at the end of the night, it's a game being played for millions. Yeah, I'll stop it, can you? I'm saying you have a read. I don't know why I keep playing Fusty. I mean, this is going to be a fun final table, is what I'm quickly learning. For Norman, Chad, Kara Scott, and Joe Stapleton, I'm Lon McCarran. We have our final table, and we'll see you there. This could be what poker needs. <laughs>